What's happening, weirdos? This is Laura Peake, one of my new favorite comedians. She is incredible. She's been on my Largo show. I met her uh, not too long ago as a new face at the Just for Laughs Festival in Montreal. She is so funny and so fun and so talented. I'm so glad you're here. If you're not familiar with her work, I'm assuming some of you are new to her. We're going to play a little bit of her stand-up just to give you a taste, and then we're going to do that right now, and then we'll roll into the episode. Here's Laura Peake, the very funny Laura Peake. It's always a guy on hand who's like, hey, what's up, I'm Jonathan, I'm 5'6". Blew my dick off with an M80, and I hate my mom. Hit me up, girls, no fatties. And you're like, it's not the short thing, Jonathan. You're not just short out here, buddy, you're short in here, okay? You're short of spirit. I put that joke on the internet, I almost died. Uh, they came for me, they had little knives, little newsboy caps on, they were like, oh, I missed that! Okay. Um, I am extremely grateful to have found a man that's good at sex. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. I gotta say, I'm grateful to any man that is good at sex with a woman, okay? Because I know that it is not easy to have sex with a woman. I've tried, you can hear this voice. I've been down there, okay? I've, <laughs> I've served, I've done my time. I enlisted early, I got out early. I've gone down on a lot of women, I'm bad at it, okay? <laughs> I thought I was gonna be amazing. I was like, we got all the same stuff, this should be easy. And then I got down there, have you ever tried to turn on the shower at somebody else's house? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what is this, German? What's going on? <laughs> She's like, push it to the east. I'm like, the east? <laughs> I'm not a sailor, I'm just horny for God's sake. <laughs> I've got the like beautiful mind equation over my head. I'm like, carry the two. <laughs> I treated eating a woman out the way that I treat changing a flat tire. Or I got down there and I was just like, listen, I know there's a right way to do this. <laughs> but I gotta, I gotta call my dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm looking right at it. Yeah, I'm looking right at it. Uh -huh. What'd you do to mom? She seems chill. What's going on? Tell me everything. <laughs> no, yeah, I can FaceTime for sure. <laughs> I turn the camera around. He's like, well, there's your problem right there. <laughs> All right, everybody. Not too much to plug up top here. We're going to have some new dates that we're adding to PeteHolmes.com. I believe it's going to be Houston, Pittsburgh, and Milwaukee. Those are going to be added very soon. Right now, you can get tickets to my Chicago show the Thursday night that we just added. We also have my May the, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May 4th in Los Angeles. I'm doing the Netflix is a Joke Festival. Uh, I hope you can be there. If you can't, I also have my monthly Largo show. Uh, we have one here at the end of March. Go to largo-la.com. Those are always so fun. The last time, as I always say, Adam Sandler was there. Judd Apatow is frequently there. Sarah Silverman, Zach Galifianakis, it's TIG. It's incredible. Hope you can be there. It's always the highlight of my month. All the tour dates are at PeteHolmes.com. And speaking of PeteHolmes.com, we are getting uh, the rest of our Dirty Clean vinyls from our friends at 800 Pound Gorilla. Dirty Clean is the special I did for HBO. It has bits like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, we have a limited press vinyl of Dirty Clean, and there's only a few left, and we're selling the rest of them on PeteHolmes.com, and all of the proceeds are going to Homeboy Industries. Uh, a nonprofit that is very near and dear to my heart. So get one of the last remaining Dirty Clean vinyls and help a wonderful cause. The link is at PeteHolmes.com. All right, everybody, let's get into this episode. I'm so glad you're here. Let's enjoy together the hilarious Laura Peak. Get into it. Is this, we, Have you never had a magic, magic mind? mind? No, I've heard about it on your podcast, though. You're going to drink it. What does it do? You like it. It makes you... Feel good. Okay, love it. <laughs> the shadiest. Uh, it, it makes it you really feel, feel good. good. No, it. Uh, Turns out your dad feels little good. caffeine. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, little caffeine, but it also calms you down. I love that. I need that exactly so for it's both. probably all of my life. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect ad for Magic Mind. I need it for all of my life. Are you scared most of the time? Magic Mind. <laughs> Are you scared, but also have emails to reply to? Magic Are you Mind. But trying to have a career that beats something you. Magic mind. <laughs> we'll get you up and take you down. Magic mind. Oh, they get that. 
Oh. All your hot riffs were just totally oh, missed. Oh, God, we lost my riffs. We got them, Ambien. Useless riffs. You got them, Ambien. I'm riffing you're into the wind. You're supposed to just shoot it. Oh, I take it all the way back? You don't God, have to. I don't shoot anything anymore. Oh, yeah, you're Sobe Noodles. Well. You're New Mexico sober. <laughs> Which means this is your joke, but I take it. What if I just take it? No, while take giving it, please. Take content, it. I'm sure, I'm sure you can you deliver it better than I can. And MDMA, <laughs> yeah. but you don't do booze. Exactly right. New Mexico sober. I did since last we talked. I did. Um, I I I went back to booze for a moment. You did. I did. I don't know. I feel like this is gonna be. <laughs> I did. I did. I feel like this is gonna be such a lifelong thing of mine that it's just like just going back and uh, forth. Yeah, or just like. It's going to take me a while. It's going to take me a while to realize that I need it fully out of my life, is what I mean to say. <laughs> how, uh, I shouldn't ask you how old you are. It's an old crowd work ask joke. Me. How much do you weigh? That's, a, that's not my joke. That's not my joke. I saw a road guy do it. That is awesome. And a road comic is brilliant twice a day. Oh, you 100%. Know what I mean? A, a, like a broken clock is... <laughs> a road comic is a broken clock. <laughs> Is what I'm saying. But, you know, like, in fact, I shouldn't even say road comic. Like, they're not us. I just mean, like, when we were coming up, there were guys that only worked the road. Those and people. Had no interest in, like, the hip rooms. And they tended to make acts that were very utilitarian. Yes, yeah. It works everywhere. Works everywhere except the cool rooms. Except here. Yeah, yeah. yeah except it's cool often places. horrifying. And it's often, it's where you get the stereotype of, like, Airline peanuts. Yes. G spots hard to find. A hundred percent. Where's uh, the clit? We yeah. don't know. There's a lot. You know what I saw as a big trend? What was your what I want to know what yours is. Mine was always you knew they were doing their closer when they said, if I was president. Oh my God, that's do, hilarious. They'd like, they do like it would be illegal to <laughs> Like be in the left lane. Yes. In a minivan going 40. And everyone's like, fuck. Ah! Yeah, fuck They're yeah. standing up and running yeah. around the room like earthquakes on stage. Ah! <laughs> See? He said it. He did it. He said what we're thinking. I don't know if I have a definitive, like, you, don't have you know they're doing their closer, but it would always be like, so much more physical than the rest of their act. It was yes. always a huge tearaway act pants, out at the maybe. end. Yeah. Oh my God. The tearaway yeah. pants. A, a track is cued. That's <laughs> a track is cued. Somebody's pulling something up. A guide to closing on the road. <laughs> the sound guy is coming back from his cigarette. Yeah. Cueing the track. <laughs> you and can hear him on the mic. <clears throat> <laughs> you hear the sound of a CD. <laughs> Do you remember those? Is that a thing? No, no. I was just. I'm so glad you stopped me. I'm so glad you stopped me. I liked it. I didn't know where I was going to go with my three freestyle. Those CDs that you would buy that had a brush on them that would clean the lens. Oh my god! Yes, I do remember those. Don't try and put it in your car. One. I still. I still have a CD player in our car, and I discovered like a. It's it's precious. The worst, oh God, the most so condescending. Oh, wow, well, that's sweet. Oh, hey, are you okay? <laughs> God love you. Wait, no, that's uh, bless your heart. Bless, bless your heart. heart. There bless you go. You know, you know my you. southern history. Bless your heart. Um, but you I have know, all Laura these CDs. Has a CD in her car. Laura's got CDs Laura's out the wazer. She's got them in the wazer. She's got her <laughs> six favorites. Sometimes she just puts that visor down. She's looking. I don't think she sees the road. She's just picking hootie and the blowfish. Two thousand four. Put them in backwards. You got another rear view mirror. <laughs> A circle rear view. I break my rear view mirror and just hang <laughs> just, up my hoodie and the blowfish CDs. You got to. That feels like you got to. You got to. <laughs> cracked rear view. Cracked got, rear view. When you, you got, got a cracked to. rear view, you got to. That's my closer. That's my. You know you you're got gonna, to. You got to. <laughs> you got to. You got it. This would crush Pete. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Get out of the left lane. You got, you got it. To. If I it. was president, everybody's gay. You got, you got it. it. <laughs> And now non-smokers have to go outside to get a break from us. You got, got to. It. You got to. I'm lighting up. I'm lighting up in front of them bones of what I just ate because I got to. I got to. I'm eating a chicken wing. Can you imagine oh, the freedom? That's... You're a smoker still? Yeah. <clears throat> Can you imagine the freedom of lighting up a cigarette in a restaurant? Okay, so Can I you was. you even imagine? It was. Uh, what year did they? F- well, they outlawed smoking inside in the South much later than they did everywhere yeah, I think else it was in the world. A few months ago, but I yeah, it, it truly it was like stop 50, it. They're like, it's actually I just got a notification on my phone. <laughs> they also just no, I shouldn't say that. I almost said they just figured out email. That's no, too far. No, 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 no. I mean, that's if you're talking about my family, far. that's exactly right. My dad still prints out every email that he gets. <laughs> um, <laughs> He has a whole ass business and he is still free. Can you print this for me? Can you make this a fax for me? Yeah. 
<laughs> I need to change the font size. Better print. Um, no, I still smoke. I, that'll be the last thing I kick. That I mean, yeah. it's the hardest You're thing like in the Scarlett world. Scarlett Johansson in the beginning of Lost in Translation. Oh is my that, god, does that hold a special uh, yes. place in your heart? I love that movie so much. I watched it on a but plane that recently. Line specifically, yeah. where she goes, "I'll quit later." Yeah, it's Cheers really it. beautiful. It's really beautiful. That movie is so gorgeous. I know. I you wept. know they hated each other. I heard. No, during recording. I heard. I never would have guessed the I scene heard. when they're out karaokeing. I'm like, two people have never been more in love. I know. Oh God, what a beautiful movie. I've been crying on planes a lot lately. They say the altitude, but how can altitude open your heart? That's my question. <laughs> I'm crying at you every moment. You got it. You got it. <laughs> and I'm on tomato juice. You got it. Those freaks that are getting a star. Are you getting a straight up tomato juice no. on a plane? Who? I don't. Can I have Bloody Mary mix? <laughs> no. Do you, you want to get drunk? I can show you the jump seat <laughs> if you want to drink a fucking salad dressing of vinegar. If you're ready to end your whole life, yeah, fine. How bad do you just want to feel your salivating taste buds? The, the, it's that sour. T- it's that, like hot in the back. Of your, I think they just want to feel water. alive. They do. <laughs> they do. That's one of my old jokes. I uh, Old people, when I was a waiter, always wanted really hot tea. Oh and they were God. like, please make sure it's hot. And I'm like, that's their feeling for the day. <laughs> that's what they get. That's, that's what, what they, they get. get. It's like when you see, well, this is really mean. But it's like when you see people in the South, like really go out, like go all out obsessively for their wedding. And you're like, that's your, that's, that's your, your thing. thing. That's, that's going to be your, your thing. that's your one day. That's your hour special. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I know Mike Birbiglia said this to me. He was like, it's hard. I'd like to know about you. And what does your partner do? Uh, he is in law school. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> what about, whatever you said, whatever you said, I was just going to. <laughs> I decided on that bit way before you said law school. Please no. I was like, whatever you say. The ultimate crowd work. (laughs) What a fucking idiot. (laughs) That's the best crowd work comic. I do a crowd work special. I go, what do you do? I'm a pharmacist. (laughs) Loser. Loser. Not as cool as this. Not as cool as what I'm up That's to. That's <laughs> so funny. It's a fine line. You can make a couple jokes that are kind of like, how lucky am I that I get to do this? But you certainly couldn't do no, that. No, no, 100% not. Couldn't do that. <laughs> but he, uh, Mikey says that like it's hard sometimes with our partners because when you're a comic, so it's like every day is your birthday. Yes. It's sort of similar to what you're saying is... Here, I'll, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to. Everyone's heard me say this before. I don't need Halloween. Yeah. I don't need a special day no. to be boss hog. Yeah. To be good. To be good. Yeah. Nope. I don't need it. No. Nope. I've been Dolly Parton before. Karaoke. It was fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't yeah, need yeah. karaoke, and I don't. I didn't need my wedding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Whatever. I Truly, loved, my least special I, day. I loved my wedding. Okay, but that's my like my first wedding. Because <laughs> no, no, no. I meant my second wedding. <laughs> Shit. Val, take the tape out. I think, I think it's tape. Take the tape out. Law He's school. still doing it on tape. Yeah. <laughs> we record this on tape and upload it to a homeless shelter. No. <laughs> they get it first. They get it they first. Get they it deserve first. to get it first. They need a break. They made it. We're they, that, seemed like an, that seemed like a rude riff. Who bought the unhoused? <laughs> need these riffs. I saved it for you. Because you know, now you we're did. doing a kindness. Now we're like, hey, now let's now give it to the people. It. But I, I, Podcast I have for to the say people. this. I was going there. I know. I know. I, 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 I was <laughs> I wasn't. I was. I was. Okay. A lot of irons in the fire. Your there wedding, are so many. Southern wedding. You don't need it. What was your wedding like? Wait, we haven't had it yet. We've been engaged for two years. We've been together for like 10. Mm. You're three years away from a movie title. I, I know. I know. You're three years away from a seagull. I know, are you going I know. for the seagull? I'm going seagull. I'm going, going seagull for, for seagull. my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> we're going full seagull you I gotta just, go seagull we got we got engaged like i think it, yeah it was it's coming up on two years we had been together for close to we were together eight years at that point it's always just been like yeah we'll get married of course we'll get married yeah just not a we this keep ha- it keeps happening in our home but my brother got engaged seven months after us wedding just immediately all of our friends just so bam 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 you. and every time that Carson comes home and we have a new invitation he's like they fucking lapped us they're doing it again but I just he proposed to me that's your boy that's your husband that's your fiance my, my, my finance you can have you don't need this bit but I was like fiance I don't call Val my fiance no I hate it if you didn't know what a fiance was and you said would you like to meet my fiance I'd be like, and it's behind this curtain you think it's a cougar or like a like a, a jeweled sword yes. 
And then it's just my girlfriend that you've met a thousand times? That is a great Thank joke. You. Jeweled sword? A jeweled sword. Ladies and gentlemen. You want to meet my really fiance? Smart. And it's just some girl you've met before? Yeah. Oh. You mean Val? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I know her. That's yeah. your girlfriend. We've that's had, your girlfriend. She's yeah, going to be your girlfriend. wife soon. We've been, yeah. No, she's my fiance. Hey. My fiance. Fuck When I off. type it and it does the automatic... Yeah, oh, God, it's the tilde. So, yes, I don't know what they call no, it. In wait, what is it? Just an French. accent mark. Accent mark. This is the til- tilde's squiggles. That's the enye. Oh wow, you're right. God. Enya is a relaxing <laughs> spa music. Enya, Enya, Kanye, West, Kanye East, Kanye, Carmen, Hip Hop TPS, Kanye West. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I use my hip hop GPS, Kanye West. <laughs> the guy, this shot of mind juice yeah. went straight to your brain. Oh, I thought you were going to say your brain. No, I'm doing it too. You're and it's making it me giggle. I know. It's a, I, I, it's I a giggle have, juice. I did have it in my mind that was like, are we just going to be on mushrooms? Which, you know. I think there. I think that's. Is that where they get the nootropics? I don't know. Is that? I it mean, might be lion's mane. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There might I'll be some lion's mane in there. But, it's mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms. Okay. So your wedding, not having. You keep getting lapped. People with cake and tuxedos keep oh, running so past cute. you on and the track. And they're having these like beautiful little weddings, and we keep going, and we're like, God, that'd be nice, right? He did. He did propose when he was a year into law school, and like moments before I got just for laughs and started going on the road. So it was like. It was the timing, unbelievable. To think about having a plan. Did you guys use a planner? Did you do it all yourselves? Where'd you do it? Great question. Uh, Val did a lot of it herself, and we used a what is it called? The Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, the Jennifer Lopez. We used a Lopez. We got a we Lopez. We didn't want to go Siegel, so we got a Lopez. No, no, no. See, we went Siegel, and I think that's why we're so far behind. Because if we Lopez. went J Lo, she's got that yeah. tight bun. She's making things that happen. Bun is so tight. She's making things happen. You could happen. hide a, a note in there. <laughs> you really could. And like it her. says you're gonna have the best wedding of your entire. And she's got this. She's oh, she always had one of these. Bring oh, those back. Bring them back. Bring those back. What wanna, a cool look. I don't like this. I don't. Well, this I can't always tell. Who's on? Are you a person that's insane, or are you just like having a fight with your lawyer? Could be I, you either know? way. Could be either way. <laughs> I don't care for. And I feel like a douche, but this is worse, I suppose. But we had a J Lo, and she was great. I wish I could plug her, but I don't remember her name. Oh, that's okay. And then J-Lo, I quit drinking a week before my wedding. Oh wow! Did so, that make it so much more special? How long has that been? Well, I I've been California sober. Because I related to your bit, because I am out here doing What are you some doing? Stuff. You getting you getting a little bit high? You doing mushrooms? I can't what are you really doing? do weed. I, I'm I realizing like, either. yeah, it's not even any, well, yeah, I guess I could say anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying never. Yeah. But I happen to be, as Katie knows, and everyone listening, I'm just kind of in a place where I'm like, sort of taking control of my life a little bit, recognizing yes. what I like. Yes. You know what I wrote down one night after I got really stoned and watched like dumb movies and ate like three pizzas? God, that sounds really nice right now. Yes. I know, but <laughs> I know, but it's not that great. <laughs> Meaning it's a great idea. Yeah, it always and then seems nice. I wrote down stoned, like a note to myself. I wrote, these aren't classic nights. <laughs> These aren't classic hey, nights. Pete. Right. It's hey, like Peter. <laughs> stoned Pete wanted to be like, you gotta do it. You gotta <laughs> you got rot the it. note. Have the night. These aren't classic the, nights. These aren't classic nights. Well, it's not what you think. I, I, I feel it's that way about drinking. With, yeah, yes. that's the same. With where it's booze. like, there, there was a period where that was like romantic to me. Where you're like, oh, I'm out with my friends. I'm doing comedy. I'm partying. I'm having fun. Yeah. No longer a classic night. Like it's that. A, we're, yeah. we're allowed to close that chapter of our lives. I'm with you. Because yeah. I think there was a time, I, to say something positive about drinking, I think there was a time in my <laughs> life when, because I, I don't want to be one of those people. <laughs> That's like drinking is always bad. My father quit. I'm very proud of my father for quitting drinking. But when it comes up, he'll be like, it's evil, Peter. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm right. like, I just, I, I get it. That's his strategy. Yes. Uh, my strategy is trying to be a little bit more like, uh, yeah, there was a time in my life that that was really, really fun, but the problem wasn't the difference was, and I want to kick this back to you was I would leave a show where they were giving me free drink ticket tickets to go home and drink alone. That right. was, that was because I was just like, I'm so pragmatic Yes. that I'm like, I want to get shit faced. I don't want these people to see me shit. This is my job. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to get, I'm going to have my reward at home. Yes. I take my reward at home. It's like big heavy people, like big Jay Okerson, uh, that you never see eating. We always joked about that. Where it's a private thing. It's a private thing. And, and then I don't know if that's what big Jay does, but I think we joked about that. But with me and booze, I was definitely like, let's, let's take this 
to the lab. Yeah, you know let's really I mean? see what's going on. <laughs> and just here. like inject. If I could have injected it, just like, ma, like, <laughs> and just see the data. Yes. And it's not a classic night anymore. It wasn't, no, but I watched. I feel this way about a lot of things. I'm like. That's not everybody's relationship with it. No, and but it's, it was mine. It, it, my, I mean, I am absolutely. You're back on it. I am no, not currently. I'm. I'm. You're back uh, off it again. I'm back off. I did. It was a. It was uh, last time I saw you was when when we do that Largo show. It was like right before the holidays. I thought it was that Eddie If show. No, we did Largo after, after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where Judd was there. Yeah. Imagine if I did drink. I'm already a <laughs> sea like, shanty. <laughs> like, oh, the seagulls <laughs> told me I saw you in Montreal. And you're, you're like, like, Lauren, listen. <laughs> I don't remember my name. Seven months ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw you at Largo. Yeah, we were at Largo. Murdered. That was a fun, I mean, that room. You murdered. <laughs> murdered. There's a Southern investigator at a dinner party. <laughs> She's murdered. <laughs> this crowd's been she murdered. simply slain the whole crap on her leg or style. <laughs> the work, your special concept is you do your set and then there's a murder mystery and, a ben, and they're looking for you. There's a Ben Wapon guy yeah. that comes up. Well, she's been murdered. Somebody, oh my god, the Daniel most enabling thing in the world. That would be is, amazing. Yeah, yeah, having horrible, some... <laughs> horrible. Daniel Craig, is that his name? Yes. Is so good, and still when he's doing it, I'm a little like kind of embarrassed. Oh, it's humiliating. Oh, that accent! You can't make I anybody can't. do that. Accent. Don't. And you know he's British. Yes, you know it could it hurts. be making us so aroused. He is. But instead, it's just caramel corn as a sound. I have murder. Meld, <laughs> meld. Well, is there any voice you want solving a crime less? Less than than, than guy who's probably very racist. I mean that. <laughs> Is what I hear when I, hear. I have my presumptions. <laughs> well, everybody has their their one or two things that they assume about other people. <laughs> he keeps giving very <laughs> pointed <laughs> glares. <laughs> I wasn't even here. <laughs> well, I'm that's neither here nor there. <laughs> no, I wasn't here. You've known me my whole life. I <laughs> drove. I'm your driver. I drove you here. Everybody well, gets to looking suspicious in the cold light of day. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with considering every possibility. God damn it! He does that. He does that accent fairly well. Yeah. Oh, good. He gets a pass. I, I get. I mean, a hell. That's not a national. No, that's not. That's like what is that? I, I, Alabama? I, I, like, like Louisiana, yeah, Alabama, yeah, yeah. Georgia, Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. like julep. Yeah, me, me, julep. Me, me, julep. Like Spare he, the julep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. It's all mint. Just give me some it's mint. Just dipping mint. He has mint julep toothpaste. That's how southern he is. <laughs> that actually sounds really nice. He's so southern he uses mint julep, julep crest. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> I'm using this. Everybody's got to use mint julep crest. You got it. Did you ever see John Early's uh, episode of the characters? Yes, of course. Where, I'm looking for my denim. This is my yeah, I'm yeah, looking yeah, for my yeah, denim. Yeah, yeah. I found it. I That's found interesting it. because I would say the way you fade in a catch, like you got to do it slow. I remember feeling a little left out of the like, I need my denim. Like it already was a bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. You got to introduce it. I'm like criticizing. No, no, no. In I'm real saying, time though. I, I see what you mean. I'm so personal with jokes. I'm like, what does that mean? Why well, how is do you, it? How'd we get there? I'm looking for my denim. <laughs> And I'm like, but now that I'm saying that, I'm like, what the fuck do I Whoa, want? A that? written invitation? I'm going to be saying. John, could you call me, please? <laughs> Look, he's Buddy, Pete is the last to know. Who knows? I don't even know what I'm I, talking about. Uh, I think we would get to it slowly with me saying like, you Every joke would kind of like, but I wouldn't be even using the accent. And then it would just be like, and you got to. And then there would be other stuff Slowly. on it, and then I keep shaving it down. Yes, and then by the end, you're the like, whole, you got you got you. the whole crowd is up. That's they what take I'm off their jackets, they're all wearing shirts that say, You got to. <laughs> G O D D U. You got to. 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 You can do. You can do. What the fuck were we talking Cal about? <laughs> We're talking about smoking, drinking, your wedding being never happening. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, that, for, my mom calls me every 45 minutes and says, <laughs> and says, y'all are still getting married, right? They're also, and like, yeah. I'm like, yes. Well, they don't understand. They don't. We've never approach. been more in love. Yeah. Also, everybody was, everybody was shocked that we weren't married by year six, seven, whatever. When you were going. Uh, yes, exactly. And so I think it's just like all very new to my Southern family for people to wait this long. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. It is. 
I see it both ways. It is really beautiful. I think the ceremony of it, mm -hmm. the, the, the declaration of yes, it, yes, is yes, really yes. beautiful. And I think you'll find there's a magic to that. Yeah. Not, I don't mean religiously speaking. I just think no, there's just something court. as mammals being like, we're doing this. And everyone's like, you got it. You got it. I'm making them do it. I'm making them do it. The guy's reading our vows. You, you, you got, got it. it. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, hi, Otto. They left the key for you, my friend, under the, I think it's under the mat. They left the key under the mat. Yeah, yeah, the floor. Hi, Otto. Hi, Otto. Great plumber. You're in the LA area. <laughs> oh, thank you. He is. I'm, I'm hoping to. Do you uh, need a plumber? I, well, I'm, I want to get a house. I you really do. It. You got, you got yeah, to get somewhere to live. <laughs> you got to get somewhere to live. Wait, we were just, oh, I do want to say it then after the magic of the ceremony and all that sort of stuff. And it is meaningful. And it, and I, I, I'm a firm believer you will love it and remember it. And yes. it'll be precious. And it, it's all real. And, you know, on another side, it is a party. You're throwing a fun party. And when's a good time to you to throw a big party? Yeah, exactly. Maybe not it, right now. It, 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 I, I think it is. And it needs to be in Tennessee, which we're excited oh, yeah. about. We had three things when we. Yikes. Oh, wow, oh, yikes. oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bar. Oh, that fucking sucks. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the tenor hey. of, of Pete's talking oh, to me. Shit. This oh. Why? Is he from there too? <laughs> yes, we're both from there. Oh, you got it. Well, then you, you got, got it. it. <laughs> God, both of our families are still there the three yeah, but things what that, could be a bigger fuck you to do it out here yes. oh my god now you never got talked to it. now it i mean oh, oh yeah the most expensive wedding oh god i foisted Everyone on my wears father white. yeah oh my. you have to wear white <laughs> and then you wear neon green I, wow uh, wow sure. i want to look like the highlighted part of a page <laughs> y'all are the page this is the beginning of my story this is the beginning of my story <laughs> Wow. We jokingly said to a friend yesterday. This is the beginning of my story. The lights go dim. The audio sucks. We didn't pay How enough money. How could you leave me standing? I'm getting uh -oh. married today. <laughs> Cold white spotlight on you. The rest is done by illumination. It's uh, an animation. I, I, Carson wrote 15 for me to do. This. <gasps> wait. Great wedding gift. This is the... I was thinking about this on the way over. Because I was thinking about talking to you about stand-up. But I... He is the least, like, he does not like attention on him. He's uh, a very shy and quiet man. Steady Eddie? Uh, yes. Just, like, very, very, he is not neurotic. He is uh, very self-contained and stalwart. Um, and he is... You're definitely living with someone who's stalwart. So if I, you I, had that ready. If, if, if I That's, like, one of your... It's like one of your frequent emojis <laughs> is the word stalwart. stalwart. They're like question mark. <laughs> Did he mean stalwart? <laughs> yeah, he's stoic. He is. Calm. He's very he's calm. Like a calm. Rock. He's a yes, he is he is the stone at the bottom of a river. He is That's very, great. very chill. But law what kind of law does he want to do? He's going into he's a man of the people. He is going to do like union side labor law. Oh. And is he's interviewing I don't know if he would mind me saying this. He's interviewing right now for like the warehouse workers union and being the legal team of the garment workers union. He's a he loves it. He's that's like his whole thing. Wow. That's but great. When we uh when I started doing stand up, he um You were already together. Yes. What a nightmare which, for him. I mean one day what Laura if, just looks at him. You know, I'm thinking of doing stand up and he's I'm like Awesome. The squeak of his fork on the plate. <laughs> Cracks it up. Oh, because that's what I signed up for. That doesn't sound miserable for your partner at all. No, that's good. How long ago was that? Seven years ago. So it was pretty early in the relationship. Yeah, we were about two years in. And, and you threw a pretty big curveball. I did. I really did. And he was supportive. Yeah, uh, well, supportive to this extent. So what I was going to... I he, can't wait for this. He, he, well, it was like... I had been working at Zany's. I got fired from my first job out of college. Zany's Nashville? Yes. I got fired from my first job as like a copywriter for like a nonprofit immediately out of school. And uh, I had a friend who was working like tearing tickets at Zany's Nashville. And he was like, just come work at this place with me. It's odd. And I was like, sure. I loved stand up, but I had never even thought about it. And then did that for like two years. And then by the end of that was like, I think we're going to give this a try. Because you watched it? Because I just watched what, what, every what? night of my life. I just At watched. At the beginning, was it like, <gasps> or was it like, that's impossible? And then slowly yes. you started to see the strings? Yes, that's exactly what it was. Like, it would, it would go from like, I'm, the, the weekend I remember the most was uh, Maria Bamford and Earthquake split a weekend. Maria was early shows. Earthquake was late shows. Wow. And I called out 
of every shift and said, I am going to sit here and watch all six hours of this comedy because did that's, you? yes, I did. And I just sat in the back. I got really obsessed with it pretty quickly. Like it was like a few months where I was like, oh yeah. And those were the people where I was like, I can't imagine doing this. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Masters of their crafts yeah. in such different, amazing ways. Yeah. And then they would do local showcases and stuff. And I'd be like, okay, you start to you know, exactly you start the strings. To see the, the, the flour and the sugar and the butter. Yes. Let me ask you about that Bamford earthquake <laughs> miracle. I know, right? How, what are the odds? What was it like watching them repeat themselves? Was that heartbreaking or were you like, ha ha ha? I was it when you realized <gasps> like, I am not left-handed? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I so liked it. I yeah. so was like, oh, you get to do that. Because for people, I mean... I wouldn't say that I was unfamiliar with stand up, but for people with a cursory knowledge, the idea that it's all coming off the cuff and is all brand new yeah. is like sexy and exciting. But that was uh, my image of that was gone. And did the you moment watch like the local joke kind of come together for the by the end? The progression, they're doing the same 10 at like a weekly showcase, and I'm hearing the same comics do the same material. And getting better. Did Earthquake do a, a standard set every night? Like, was he doing it the same? He, Sorry, I mean, I, the, the wild variations yeah. within each hour. Yeah. But he had his, he had, he had he bits. Had his, yeah. But I mean, anything would come off of that. And he was just the most like in the room yeah. comic you've yeah. ever and seen. And I am assuming Bamford's a little more like, a little more I like, start with us. I had my hour. Yeah. 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 But I remember, I remember Maria was the first person that I saw. Her openers were just locals. Um, I don't think she brought a feature. And uh, the way she would just, she just sat in the staircase in the back of Zanies and like watched and laughed at her like opener she didn't no. know. And I remember being like, oh, there are like really good people in this. And she clearly really cares and was being like really supportive of them. Let's carve her a trophy. It truly. Let's send to, her something. I, to, we gotta send her something. What a kindness. I, I just, and it, that really stuck with me where I was like, oh, some of these people are like not only very good at this, but like care deeply about helping other people do it well. Yeah. And I Part just, of my thing is, if you open for me, I hit you with a pie. When yes, you come back that's right. I don't listen to a word. I put on. I put in. I put I, in earplugs. I, I do go out, but I put on the big, <laughs> the airport orange one, and I sit there like this, and I'm making the pie. <laughs> Extra whip. He looks like he's killing. <laughs> that, that's the light. When you see when me you put the cherry on, you have a minute left until this is your face, and you're just standing. You're just sitting back. <laughs> Shaking your head slowly. That used to be comedy. Pie, the, pie in the face. Oh, was don't comedy. we? Don't we wish? I sometimes right? I'm like, should I just trip over myself when I come out here? Wouldn't that be fun? And then you go to Montreal, where everything is decided, and pie in the face is still comedy. It's there. still a thing. <laughs> They're French. <laughs> like, like, Welcome to Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done being scared of Montreal. I will riff on your silly He's culture. He's saying it. He's saying I'm it. Saying He's it. saying it. All today. earthquake Montreal. Don't get me wrong. There's a All lot of great comedy Montreal. fans, but like, there's also they know. Oh, they, they know, know how goofy. There's a they lot know. of like. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, ah, oh, man. And that's where I met you. I loved watching you open those shows. Really? And I don't know how long you've been doing that or how many years they've had you do that. I just stop doing it like you with drinking. <laughs> I just keep bringing it back. <laughs> I keep going back and forth. I liked it. But then I was also like, it's so difficult. This is boring. But I, I would open for the new faces, yes. which is where I met you. Yes. And I wanted to do it. I know this might sound false, but I really wanted to like see the new faces. Yeah, I totally. Get to see all these. Shane Gillis just hosted SNL. He was one of the new faces. Yes. It's fucking crazy. Of like a few years. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. That's it insane. It was very fast. Yeah. So it's really fun to have your finger on the pulse. And I, I, I just did Skyler. Skyler. I forget Skyler's last name. Wait, my, uh, my year? Yeah. Skyler Higley. Sky, Skyler Higley yes. was writing on um, After Midnight. Yes. And I got to see him. And I, it just keeps me in the immunity. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Up in, the, up in the immunity. Keeps me up in that immunity. <laughs> it boosts my immunity. It keeps me my in the itty. The itty. <laughs> the itty. I'm Pete itty. Because I'm, I'm in that immunity. Because I'm in that immunity. I'm in that immunity. <laughs> And Your act is really way. coming together right now. I love this new hour, Pete. You got it. I <laughs> you take got you got it. it. What a heartbreak. That I would go be first. So... I'm like, come do Largo again. But I go first and I do. You got to. And you have a note card that says you got it on it. And you just start crying. <laughs> it's all I've written down. Hey, you can take the keys right there if he needs to get in. <laughs> okay. I, okay. Thank you. Oh, God. I, I'm really not loving this. I'm not loving the flow. Thank you for healing that. <laughs> the garbage disposal was broken. That oh, riff no. was fucking fucked that up, riff though. Was going... Who's going to fix the riff? <laughs> garbage Sir? disposal fixed. 
Who fixes my riff? Who fixes the riff? Who fixes the riff? How I could like, you leave me standing? <laughs> I went into comedy. <laughs> 2016 lights come up. It's pictures of me in 2016. I'm wearing like like camo rain boots. <laughs> I look like your aunt. <laughs> so. You realize it's live. <laughs> Someone's singing that. Um, where were we? I got to be. Oh, and then I realized everyone goes to new faces. Yeah. So that's good and bad. So I was doing like five shows, doing trying to do a different 10, 15 minutes for each show. Which is tough, yeah. Very tough. And then I would do my hour and I went out on stage and I do the first joke and I'm like, everyone's heard it. Oh. So I'm like, you can't, you can't do both. It's like host new faces or do a show. Yeah, I can't be expected can't really to just have the, the freshest of the fresh for that many shows over the course of a week. Yeah. Facts. So I, I've started to say no to it, but not because I didn't love it, but because I'm like, I just need to hit pause on it. Totally. But anyway, I love doing it and you murder. I had so fun, great. Mill, Bill. I, <laughs> I had so much fun there. Yeah. Also like, you know, you have, I've had so many friends get it in the past, what, has it been two years since? Yeah. You know. I think it's been two years, but I've had so many friends get it and they're like, is it the most fun experience of your life? And you have to be like, yes. And really I was like, it was the most scared I've ever been ever. That you're, never stops. You're a hundred percent. I and do I, press for that. And they're like, tell me all these leading questions. Tell me why the Montreal comedy festival was the most important thing that's ever happened to you, including the birth of your daughter. <laughs> and you're like, well, well, and you do it. I got to get it, a pie in the face. <laughs> a French clown. I almost did a ha ha. No, I didn't. You should have. <laughs> Is that still? Yeah, that's okay. That's I used fine. to have a bit where I was like, Stereotypes come from somewhere that you know, somewhere a French guy is sincerely in earnest, being like, Oh. The leave is open on Saturday. I know I should not, but oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there's no other way to say it. <laughs> and also in Japanese means I see, I believe. What does? Aso. Ah, so, so ah, that so. I'm not a fan of that one. I'm not <laughs> trying to bring that back. But still. But like it is rooted. I'm. Can you Google that? Ja, ja, I almost said Jamie. I thought it was Joe Rogan for a second. Jamie, Jamie would you, we've uh, got Joe Rogan's up? Jamie in the room. Ah, uh, so we did buy him. It's so expensive. It's There's so a expensive. lot of contention going on here, actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, is that so? Oh, is that oh, so? Is that so? Oh, right, right, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are at least seven French people saying that at this very second uh -huh. Uh -huh. and maybe in tokyo right now people are making fun of white people going like oh i see yeah oh i see oh i see oh i see <laughs> you're like have you ever heard that people talking? oh i see <laughs> but it's not the same let's be real everyone relax this is fine this no is one's fine, going down actually. for this riff <laughs> Put up the riff. Put up the riff. Uh, put up the riff cam. Riff seal of approval, <laughs> like the the Nintendo seal of approval. Standard it's okay. riff. <laughs> it's okay. It's protected. Unhurtful riff. <laughs> unhurtful. Un unhurtful <laughs> riff detected. <laughs> Nature and tone approved. <laughs> Intent. Oh my god. Felt. Pure. Pure. They were just going for silly laughs. They weren't <laughs> trying to take anybody down or boost themselves up. Who's afraid of a chuckle or two among friends? No. Riff approved. Riff approved. <laughs> we need the stamp of riff approval. I think that I I think I could design that, you know? Could you? I could make a little logo for riff approved. Could you make it look like the Nintendo seal? I think I could because I'm I, I, oddly enough, I can picture that very well from my yeah. childhood. Isn't it funny? Everything's just something somebody made up. But that <laughs> Nintendo seal of approval. That's gonna live in my mind forever. We got I it. used to play my brother used to play video games in our home. And he, I just wanted to be around him. He was like two years older than this me. I thought, cute. I thought this he was is like, like this. you and Val and her brother. Really? Same She'd way. watch him play video games. That, and she still gets a warm snow day feeling if I play video games. That is exactly how it is. Okay. Well, I spent hours and hours watching him play video games. I also come from, I'm not a sports person, but my family, all University of Tennessee. You could say, but I have the energy of a female I football don't fan. I? Look at this. <laughs> I look like I'm tailgating hard. But I look like I smell of the smoke oh, from a pickup yeah, truck that I'm, was cooking something. I'm renting you a parliament in the parking lot, 100. percent I've got a, I've got two packs. I'm good. Oh okay, I'm good for it. Do you is want that, a butt is heavy? That called, is renting a parliament? No, but I really like. Can I rent a parliament? Can I rent a parliament from you, honey? You That's look like you smoke. So I don't see him, but you good. look like you smoke. 
I feel like you, those jokes are so precious and you got to take them wherever you can. I'm not a sports fan. I know I look like a, I a female real, football I, oh, fan I, or whatever. I, That's great. And I, I, people assume. It's of like, course. it's like people are like, who's your team? I'm who's like, your oh. Team? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm into art. <laughs> I've got, I've I've got, got team face. Big team energy. I've got big, big team energy. <laughs> big team energy. This isn't like a workshop pod, but it is now. I you mean, got that's him. so true. I'm coming up with the big hat. Team energy. I got big team energy. Who are your guys? I wear a plain hat, and they're just, just like they just project whatever, whatever. That's the way. <laughs> just put your whatever team you want up here. Well, so for years, not, I like no. I'm but not. You watched him play Madden, but no, my brother did. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I would watch him play Madden, and then my parents are so obsessed with sports. Uh, my mother has the most encyclopedic knowledge of both college and professional sports that I have ever seen a human being really? have. It's unbelievable. And my father is like a very masculine, tough guy, but he has nowhere near her sort of knowledge on this. And he like right. pretends to like, they'll like go out in the garage and he'll be like smoking a cigarette and he'll like change the channel to sports when she comes out to make him, to make her think that he was watching the game. But what really, was it? It's, I, I Nova? Know. Yeah, something. <laughs> something God, awesome. the multiverse. <laughs> As He's he really into like cool. sci-fi. <laughs> is that menthol? <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Just, just like the vapors of Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> then he comes in. Oh, go! Oh, Kansas City! What is this, the Eagles? <laughs> He's really obsessed. Is this the Eagles? Is this the Eagles? This makes me love your daddy and your mom coming both, in with I mean, stats. they're, they're, un it's, it's insane how much she knows about it. And they tried to imbue this and they tried to get me into it my whole life. And it just never caught but still, like you were saying about Val, the sound of oh, a yeah. sports game going on in the background of anything makes me feel safe yeah. and like sleepy and just very at home. I watch, I'm not proud of this, but I'm not ashamed of it either. Sorry, I'm going to stop that voice. No, people people do this around, like, know. you know, and I love it's it. it's a joy. It's, it's, when I play really? this out, they go, it's a vacation for your mouth. <laughs> I sound like y'all to me. I can, I can it's a break. It is. I can legitimately do comedy at like 25% the speed that I do out here. They don't mind. If you go too fast, they're like, where is she what, going? What, what is this? Why is she driving away from me Are so fast? Are you being deposed? <laughs> Actually, when you're being deposed, you go slow. You probably, you probably ought to go slow. Well, um, interesting. The day in question to the best, because you're trying to, to run out the To the best of my knowledge. Somebody just told me that that's a sales technique. You know, when the, I guess this is obvious, but when you go to buy a car, they want to keep you there. For, so you're pot committed. You know that term in mm, poker? You but, bet so much that you can't fold because you, you're pot committed. You're in there. Okay. So yeah. they want you to be there so long. That's just, So they'll leave the room to talk to their manager, but they're not talking about anything. Oh, they're just... Then they come back and they're like, we're almost there. I'm going to get you that windshield <gasps> protection. But like, I just need you to wait five more minutes. You seem like a man that makes decisions, but I'm going to need you to... Then you just leave and eat a croissant. Because you'll feel like a fool, and it's like sunk cost, like so, like your yeah. your time. You've has been, been there spent. so long. If you leave without a car, what are you what a fucking idiot? communist? <laughs> are you a communist? You just wasted four hours on a Saturday. That's right. Well, which I, that is so interesting Isn't because it really is quite opposite what you would assume. I would assume that they were trying to get you in and out of there, sell, 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 turn and burn. But they really want you to turn and burn. That's some very interesting Inside. psychology. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. that is very very. So interesting. anyway, fast, slow. Uh, but it is like a spa day for your tongue. Talking it, oh, in a it, southern to accent. it totally is. And I go back down down there and I feel like a phony. But if I'm around my friend, I'm talking. I visited my family in Texas. Val, Val's family in Texas. The thrill of throwing out my first y'all. Oh, y'all have a good it, day. Doesn't. <laughs> And you think they're going to catch you? No, and they're like, what you say? What the <laughs> fuck did he do? Silver, silver six shooter. Silver plated. He's Nickel not, plated. He's not y'all. <laughs> Can I see your y'all license? <laughs> y'all card. Excuse me? <laughs> but that's the trick is if you go, oh yeah, and they go, there ain't no y'all <laughs> card. That's how they, they know. They got you. They absolutely got you. <laughs> oh, I yeah. knew he wasn't for <laughs> I knew. Y'all card, what kind of ridiculous shit does he think we're doing down here? <laughs> Pardon the interruption, weirdos. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Modern Mammals. You guys hear me talk about Modern Mammals all the time because before they were a sponsor of this show, I was just all in as a fan, pure and simple. It's the only shampoo that I've ever found that cleans your hair but doesn't fry it out and dry it out, making it look like shit. 
That's as simply as I can put it. I used to not wash my hair. That was my secret. Uh, and my hairdresser would always be like, please clean your hair. Please. And I couldn't. If I washed it, it looked like tumbleweed that just came out of the dryer. It would look terrible. It was unmanageable. It was flying all over the place. I had to put all these different products in it. Modern Mammals is the one-stop shop. You wash it. You clean it. No product. It's just ready to go. Perfect hair. 30 seconds every single time. No waiting period. So many guys I talk to have the same strategy. Just don't wash your hair. Clean your hair, though. Clean it, but don't shampoo it. Modern Mammals it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Perfect hair in 30 seconds. So many men have converted to modern mammals. They have so many, 40,000 guys have left incredible reviews. They are out of their mind for this product. Once you try it, you will be hooked for life. I am positively hooked for life, which is why I'm always giving it to guests and talking about it and blabbing about it. You won't go back to regular shampoo after this. It's a small, wonderful company, Grassroots. I love the guys that are working on it. And they uh, basically just had a passion to set out to make a new shampoo alternative specifically for guys. They have bars for no plastic, no fragrance, or bottles. It's like a magic gray mud that I love the feeling and the smell of that gets your hair perfect every single time. Six seconds to perfect hair. You can try both the bar and the bottle by going to modernmammals.com slash weird, and you'll get both of them, a special combo deal for 44 bucks. That's the bottle and the bar for 44 bucks. They last a really long time, by the way. Modernmammals.com slash weird. Seriously, no going back. Amazing, amazing, amazing. What am I saying? I'm just saying amazing, but it's true. We're also brought to us by our friends at Vita Coco. You see it on the set. I love Vita Coco when I am feeling sluggish or dehydrated and I, or if I just want to treat something sweet that isn't filled with chemicals and added sugars, but something sweet and delicious, I reach for a Vita Coco. It is real. It is natural. It is from the earth, but still tastes like a treat. And Vita Coco is the number one coconut water brand in the United States. Get some balance in your life with healthy beverages that are actually fun. Vita Coco comes in wonderful flavors, not just coconut, but pineapple and peach and mango, which are incredible. Coconut water, as we know, has nutrients to supercharge you and make you feel good. Helps amazingly with the recovery after a workout. Vita Coco replenishes you and it keeps you performing at your best and shining strong for the rest of your day. It's also a wonderful mixer for those of you making cocktails and mocktails out there. Throw some tequila, agave, and a squeeze of lime and you have an amazing cocktail that also has electrolytes and nutrients in there, which means you have a better feeling morning after. So two birds, one stone, delicious and Floods your system with those things you need to not feel like crap in the morning. Or if you're like me, use it to make a mocktail. Because of the electrolytes, coconut water can help you bring you back to life if you're feeling hungover as well. So take 25% off and get Vita Coco shipped to your door by using code WEIRD20 on VitaCoco.com. That's how I get it. You ship it. It's there. It's boom. Put it in the fridge. Ready to go. Prefer to shop in store. You can find Vita Coco at most big name grocery stores in your city as well as in superstores like Walmart, drugstores like CVS, and your local convenience stores and bodegas. That is it, everybody. Try Vita Coco. Clean your hair with modern mammals. Let's get back to Laura Peak. Yellow card. <laughs> but it is fun, but I'm worried it sounds condescending. I'm not trying to be condescending. I no, just you can, love it. There, well, you can, there is like a like threshold. Scope, you can tell, but oh my God. He does his whole act in the Southern accent, never addresses it. It's so great. It's I know, so great. Because he knows the pleasure of the spa day. Y'all do an anal. Y'all do an anal. Y'all do an anal. Who's Rory doing? had an opener. I saw him and I, I didn't, we're, we're just having this kind of episode. Come, oh yeah, I, I like it. I really like the Rory anal. came out. He didn't even remember doing it because he never does. Uh, I only say that because it infuriates me. Because oh, I'm because like, that's the best opener I've ever seen. He, oh and he my never, God. he hasn't done it since. I, I hate him. I, know. I hate him. Me too. Rory, I hate you. Rory, we hate you. We hate your candy ass, Rory. No, he's just so <laughs> pure. Rory's like good butter. It, That's how he tastes oh, to he's me. He's Kerrygold. Kerrygold butter <laughs> with salt on it, little yeah. little thick rock salt. He comes out, he goes, does anybody have a Viagra? Because I need to be hard right now. <laughs> and he just keeps, I need to be hard right now. Is so funny. I can't stand him. The, the, okay, the one thing that I really... I'm trying to fix in comedy in my own standup is rigidity. The feeling that if things aren't going exactly as I'd like them to, that it is okay to depart from my 
friggin' script. Preach. And to be in Silly the moment. And have fun. Goof. Can I say it? This is how I think of it. Be funny. Don't do jokes. Just be funny. Don't do funny. Be Don't do funny. funny. Be funny. That's very good. That's R- very, very good advice. Ramda said that to me. That's really smart. That's really cool. Spiritual name drop. <laughs> Sorry, Richard Alper. I'm dropping spiritual names. Spirit drop. I said that the other day. I was like, something Deepak Chopra said to me. And I was like, I'm going to go put myself in no, a wood chipper. No, if it's true, if it's, if it's true, it it's true. It was true. And it was nice. <laughs> it's it was never going to be bad. It, was, it wasn't bad. He said Deepak something Chopra insane said to me, you. Get the fuck out of my kitchen. This is where I live. Deepak Chopra once said to me, are you looking at my wife? <laughs> are you looking at my wife? Because the universe is one, but you're about to be a million pieces. But you're about to be zero, You're bitch. about to be zero. <laughs> you're about to taste the void, bitch. Deepak? Deepak Chopra wants Deepak? to do it. What the fuck <laughs> did you just say to me? To quote Ram Dass, Jesus Christ, can't I have a moment to eat? That's what he said to me once. And man, he meant it. Uh, <laughs> but being, that's I what... said no parsley. He's freaking out about his mouth. No! <laughs> parsley! I remember being a kid eating parsley in a steakhouse and I was like, oh, this is a mistake. Good, bad, not for you. What is it for? See. What is it for? Oh, you like. When I run across, what was I having the other night? Cilantro? Parsley's drunk sister? (laughs) I'm the cilantro to to my brother's parsley. Big team energy. (laughs) Parsley doesn't watch sports. Cilantro's at every game. Parsley's reading. Parsley's reading. (laughs) reading a book about like a, bettering himself. A textbook, He, he doesn't too. waste his time with fiction. Cilant- <laughs> cilantro is all about fiction on tape. So, yeah, cilantro <laughs> is crying in an audiobook of short stories because they're... Because Chicken soup for the soul. That's what so cilantro... They're so stupid. They're so stupid. Cilantro loves Cilantro's it. reading at a fourth grade level but talking like they know what they're doing. Cilantro's on Facebook and loves it. And is DMing you. Oh, <laughs> sliding in. Oh, I saw this ahead. quote. Everybody. Yeah. Sharon quotes. Sharon quotes. My mom just sent me, she texted me the video of Jimmy Kimmel announcing he was hosting the Oscars and just sent it to me. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do with that. The cilantro. things they choose. The things they choose. The things they choose to share. The things they choose <laughs> to share. Fascinated. Why, mom? I had a friend. Um, say recently that he had to and this is just, he is not in entertainment he's like an art like a visual artist but he was saying that he had to block his family members from being able to comment on his instagram because oh, wow. they would just be like lovely piece your niece ate peanut butter the other day he's like we're not communicating like this we Hilarious. can't this, this can't be how we keep in touch about our family my mom is obsessed with my sister-in-law's facebook account and recently she posted on a picture of her oh my my sister-in-law Beth posted an old photo of her okay, yeah. when she was like 25. And my mom wrote, this is a real comment, <laughs> if it's possible, you look even better then. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's how time yeah, that's, works. It's, she, it's unbelievably we all possible. Look better. It's unbelievably possible. It's actually likely. That's yeah. not the expression. You looked, but I know my mom so well that she means it's you're so beautiful, it's impossible. You look even better than I like that's oh. the insanity of being in a family. Is I'm like, I know how she meant it. You know her tone. There's no chance that she was saying that. She she wasn't saying she wasn't being a bee <laughs> in it's... apartment 23. <laughs> you know what I'm she's saying? never been that. She I say that just... in my apartment a lot. You're being a bee in apartment 23. Do you use that a lot? <laughs> I'm out. I'm out here using B in 23. It's, it rips. I've never seen a single episode of what that What was show. the episode? What was it called? The B? The B and don't don't trust the B in apartment yeah, don't 23. Don't trust the three. It was one of those. It was, yeah. I think it was do- Yeah. Yes. It was a long title. <laughs> yeah. We, we used to do that. We used to really extend. Yeah. That if it's possible, you look even better than you look when even you were 25. Than, and she was like, yeah. Yeah. I think that, wait, yeah. she's doing math. Before she I carry had the two. two. Kids. Yeah, I, yeah. I could look even I better. I looked than- a little more rested, didn't I? Because we out here. <laughs> With handy we snacks and handy snacks and raising two children. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. Wait, guys, where are we? I have no idea. You where tell we're... me what you remember. I remember nine things, but I want you to go. I, one thing that I was thinking about was: Did we do a show together with R- Rory recently? No, we didn't. Oh, we were talking about favorite Rory. Yes, and my favorite, my favorite Rory that I don't, I was not even there for, and I doubt he remembers. Was he was in a club where they pipe the the audio into the bathroom. Yes. Which is my favorite thing in the entire world. Yes. Because when you're in the bathroom as an audience member, you can hear the 
the comic clearly yeah. no laughter almost yeah, yeah, almost always bombing. completely divorced just from him. what's happening in the room yeah. which is the saddest way to listen to stand up and scary in a lot of ways and where you're, you're like accenting it with your own kind of your you're, you're and pissing stuff. and shitting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all ever go to walmart <laughs> Like it's, it's not the sound the comic wanted, but there's a lull. You start timing they're it. Sitting, they're sitting there shitting and just clapping. You got a sitting ovation, man. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with a good poop joke. No, oh, come on. Bit I approved. love approved. Bit, bit, bit approved. approved. Riff approved. Riff We're approved. having fun. Intent Everybody Intent detected. detected. <laughs> Intent. Yeah. Pure intent detected. Pure intent. I'm sending you a logo after this. Um, Please do it. Uh, we'll gram it. But apparently, the moment he got on stage, somebody went up, uh, like a woman got up and went to the bathroom, and he b- became faux furious at her and was like, I can't believe you're leaving right now. And he was like, he was like, we're not going to start until you come back. And she was like, obviously, he's kidding, goes to the bathroom. And he's like, what's her name? And they're like, Amy. And he laid down on the stage I'm and dead. just screamed, Amy, <laughs> Amy, I know you can hear me. Get back out here, Amy. We're not starting without you. And it was like three minutes. And then she was scared to come back. So it went on even longer. <laughs> she was scared to come back. And that was part of the show. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And he was, you know, you can picture it. He's laying stock still on the ground, mic up of like course. this, just Amy. screaming. <laughs> Stop peeing out of your vagina. You know. He doesn't understand vaginas. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I clearly don't. <laughs> That's like the sprinkler system on the lawn of the vagina is the PP. Wow. Right? That is, yeah. if that was in my textbooks, I would have understood that a lot sooner. Right. You know? I, I'm i not going to talk about that. I, I just remembered a sex ed quiz I took where they were like, why when the wiener is <laughs> in sex mode, doesn't it pee? Like, how does another? And I just drew a crossroads. And there was just like, and then there was a tube that went to this one for sex and this one for pee. And then when it wasn't using the pee, one was just dangling, dangling free in the ocean of your blood cells. I feel like that's exactly right. I got partial credit. Uh, I still don't know what it is. When the wiener is in sex mode. Yeah, when the wiener's in sex, I'm writing that out. When the wiener's in sex mode, you can't, because that was, believe it or not, doesn't this take you back to sex that it does me? It does me. It does for me, honey. Our big question was, what if you have to pee yes. during sex? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, but that's your pee thing. You thought that was going to be a much bigger uh, problem. If, it's like I think sand. most of sex was... Do you have to pee? Do you have to pee? <laughs> That's what consent is, making okay. sure she doesn't have to pee. The time. And then you announce it. I'm gonna pee. I'm gonna pee. <laughs> Let's pee at the same time. Let's pee at the same time. It makes so much sense to confuse coming with pee. I'm gonna pee. <laughs> Because when you first, I mean, not to get too in the weeds on this, but when you first do orgasm, you're like, I'm like, I'm it, yes. We, we. It's a weird thing to think this is. I'll join you in the weird pool. <laughs> You know, you're probably in your bed, and usually you're used to things. Co- I'm talking about the the people that things come out. Yeah, see, yeah. You're like something's gonna come out, but I don't have to I be in the bathroom. I- <laughs> <laughs> like this is a this is a small. This is so gross. Oh my Bodies God, are it's so gross. Up so hard. We went, Carson, and I, I don't I- have to go to the bathroom. This have- is a bedroom wet. <laughs> Bed, there's bedroom wet and there's I'm, bathroom wet. I'm allowed to get bedroom wet by myself. Mom. <laughs> Mommy. Bedroom wet. I'm going to pee. <laughs> How is it not pee? It, and by the way, we... look, if we were to apply the same kind of entrepreneurial logic to our bodies as we do to corporations, you know, like it, like we sell modern mammals, right? Uh, that's a shampoo for guys. And I'm like, we should also do it for ladies. That would be like doubling the thing. Sure. So pee should be semen is what I'm saying. That's ex- okay. Wow. We Flawless already have it shooting pee. Flawless logic. Flawless. I mean, that's the best argument for pee being semen. I've well, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard plenty. That's airtight. <laughs> but you know, you go on Shark Tank and you go, we have the human penis. It shoots pee. It shoots semen. And somebody's going to be like, Make it one. Make it one thing. Make it CP. CP. I'm seeping. C- urine. <laughs> Coming urine. Does seeping. Katie have it? I thought you had it. Urine. Urine. Uremen. 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 Shooting uremen. <laughs> Look, if it goes in the bowl, it's it was P. If it goes in the hole, it was C. Uremen is like your, your, your Eastern European uncle. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're I, European I, uncle. What? Yeah, you're even. 
<laughs> okay. I think seeping for coming is the best. Seeping. I'm seeping. I'm seeping. I mean, it couldn't be worse because oh, it, just... it really it, it denotes like a like a like squeezing a sponge. Yes. But, which is not what I'm that's gonna like. Seep. I'm gonna seep. Oh, There's fitting, a breach. I'm fitting to seep. There's a breach in me. Little boy blue. <laughs> There's a there's a breach in me. There's a breach in me before you go. I'm going to breach. Or pee at a urinal with shoulder to shoulder with other guys. I'm going to breach. Yeah. Is this the most immature episode you've ever done? I feel bad. I feel like I've brought this upon no, you. No, what a joy. All I'm thinking is most people don't get to have talks like this since they were like 12. And it's fun to it's revisit. It's so fun. It's fun to revisit. Semen and pee should be, be the, the same. same. Let's go, it let's... should be one flow. <laughs> I, I imagine that that is very confusing. As a, I mean, that has to be very confusing as a young man. Yeah. That they're not different mechanisms at all. We thought it was Or it doesn't be appear to be. Yeah. Except for your drawing may be exactly correct. My one drawing. just gets lazy. The, the why. Inside you, there are two wolves. <laughs> <laughs> The one you feed. <laughs> Which one comes? You know, Ram the one you said feed. Ramdas said, when you're in bed, which wolf is the wolf that comes? <laughs> the one you feed. <laughs> Deepak Chopra said, oh semen and urine should be the, <laughs> the same, same fluid. Also, isn't it kind of cute that we're wired to procreate. Yes. Like it's also kind of embarrassing that we're like here, like cells that, yes. to like split and reproduce. But then isn't it kind of adorable that the designing principle, I'm not even talking about God, just the designing bi biological principle was like make sex feel good so they do it. So they do it more. Because yes. like every time you pee, if you had an orgasm, I mean, is that brilliant? I, <laughs> like, I, I, wouldn't yeah. that be great if you're like, <laughs> I think I think there would At be the a lot park. less violence in the world. I really do. If you could achieve that from just and it wasn't shameful, it didn't come with what was taught to be a shameful act right. for you. You're just you know? everyone's just having full or orgasm every time they piss, and that's Why it's not? been a function your entire life. You're not brought up to think that it's yeah, you're not it's brought not up to think that special. It's like like guilt. I had secret sex. It was have. just like peeing, but you know someone else was there. <laughs> Doing, yeah, exactly. Nice. And I was nice to her. But like <laughs> I've made this point on stage before, but it's so weird that your body can so you're having an orgasm and your body goes let it out yeah good so it has it yes it's in a room yes the feeling yeah but it goes not until he jizzes <laughs> no there's like a fucking uptight office manager that's like, like and if you're a lady not for until 45 minutes you were going four or five minutes 50 minutes wait, in you're gonna wait. be tired you're not even gonna really want it to happen anymore <laughs> Hold. I was just going to say, the female orgasm is like Braveheart. Hold. <laughs> it is. Hold. <laughs> and they're like, they're really going Please, for it. Hold. <laughs> it's so insane. Hand shaking. <laughs> Hold. <laughs> Oh, that is good. I'm so. That is good. It's exactly right because you're like, you're ready for it. It's not like you feel unsafe or something. You're like, no. oh, let's get there. That would be no. fun. But you, if, if I feel like I can relate in the times that I'm trying to finish. Yeah. It's not the same, but to, in solidarity. Sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You are kind of getting over like a psychological, Which, like if it's like, let's say it's the first time I had sex with Val, you're kind of like, it's the first time you're going to bedroom wet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bedroom wetting my new bride. I'm carrying over the threshold and bedroom. I'm going to small pee. <laughs> Here comes the small bedroom wet. Oh my God. There's a breach. <laughs> There's a small bedroom wet breach. I'm going to breach is going to stick in my head so deeply that I think I'm going to be sleeping with my partner and be like, oh, wait, what? I get really excited. I'm like, yes. I'm going to breach. Oh, no. Or you <laughs> this afternoon, he's like, what you talk to Pete about? Mostly breaching. <laughs> Mostly breaching. Are you going to breach? You bring it into your, your dirty talk. Are you going to breach? We did for a while. Sexy Call talk? No, no. <laughs> We did for a while as a joke, just never in the bedroom, but call it goofing, which I'm I goof. I think is the funny. I yeah, know Val goof. and I have joke words, right? For you have everything. to. Well, you have that joke that I love that I think is relatively new, but 
Oh, what, what do you say to her? You've awoken in me a primal urge. I'm so touched you remember Oh, I, I, I say it to myself You've all the time. You've awoken in me a primal I urge. I absolutely love that phrase. It's so funny. I does really she appreciate it. Does she still it. laugh every time she hears that? Or is I've she kind of like, In right. the joke I say, I say that every time we have sex. And the truth is I've probably done it. But this is way too many times. Probably five times. Okay, yeah. That's, that's still, a yeah, lot of that's times. That's almost every time. <laughs> and it's in the voice of Jack Lemmy. You've awoken, awoken in me a primal, primal urge. urge. <laughs> it's because there's part of me that thinks sex is so silly. Oh, it is. That I have to get into it sometimes with a joke. Yeah, yes. Like, isn't that weird, though? You've woken a side of me? Men are werewolves. 100%. And inside you are two wolves. And there's a full moon. Yes. And you're like, I, I don't mean like I'm unconscious. I just mean like suddenly something that wasn't important has become very, very important. important. And, uh, and unavoidable. Yeah. And isn't that silly? Yes. And I think there is like the... And I don't know how y'all approach this, but I think about it all the time with Carson where I'm like, we've been together so long that like we're laughing right up until the point that we're like actually having sex. Like we're never going into it just being like, eh, like yeah. sexy little vampires yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like, let's goof around for a few minutes. That's I'm going to, oh, we're going to, we were watching Barbershop last night and he paused Barbershop and we were kind of starting to kiss. And I was That's like, it's in my bit now, by the way, really? I go, the routine, if I want to have sex with Val is first I pause, P pause the TV. It, yes, yes. And everyone laughs. Yes. And I go, that either means sex or I want to get a pizza. Uh, yes. It's or one, or, <laughs> one or the other. Like, that's the only reason to pause. Exactly. And then I look at her and I wiggle my eyebrows. Yeah, that's the whole thing. <laughs> I love that. But I think there's something about laughing. And, you know, what are you doing when you're laughing with somebody? You're going like, I trust you. I'm, I'm so, yes. I'm uh, supporting you. Yes, I feel not threatened by you at all. In fact, if someone doesn't laugh at something or critiques a joke, like, I'm like, I'm the least into you just as a person oh yeah oh my god I just in daily I don't mean life. sexually i'm just like i don't feel safe with you oh 100 you know? if, if somebody well that's why we've been approving riffs left and right today if well, someone, this whole place is an approved yeah <laughs> it's a riff zone it's a riff zone but it, but if someone i mean i feel that all the time in comedy where like if you meet somebody and they and they nullify a riff or they're yeah. like quite i'm like oh oh no 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 no. We won't be moving forward. No, no, uh, that, no. That, that, that's, that's the safest place I can be is letting my guard down. And if I am truly getting to know somebody and I feel that they have shut me down comedically, which maybe that's an ego. In some ways, I'm like, that's an ego thing. Yeah, but what's more delicate than our egos? I know, exactly. You're not offending my soul. Yes. It's the sweet little boy that's like, do you like me? Do you like and you're like, me? no. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I knew it. <laughs> have you graduated as a person and a comedian from... Uh, and this is assuming that you had this, but uh, from needing to be liked by every single person that you meet. Yes, but it's not always, but I'm much better at it and it's helpful. Yeah. It's helpful. Were you a real people pleasy? Yes, I have been my Still. entire life. Or are you and getting over it? I am. I'm like, I'm, I, for the first time, probably in the past year, I've yeah. been like, hey, well, because people pleasing comes from so many things, but mostly for me, it comes from like, I have a lot of trouble sitting alone with my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. I have pretty poor self-esteem. I'm meant, I've got OCD. I'm, you know, I'm kind of all over the place in, mm -hmm. inside my own head. And so I think forever it was like, Oh, validation from other people will help me this. or just means that I'm okay. Like means that I'm like, I can see myself reflected in them. Right. Their version of right, me right. is something I'll accept for myself and uh, then that'll make me okay with my own personality. Is, not to force it early, but that's why I'm so interested in spirituality because spirituality to me, one of the ways you could summarize it is is getting your base coat of your existence. Yes. Just I'm good. Yes. Like I'm, I'm okay. fine. Like I like I've already been. I know this is a very religious language, but like it's like God thinks I'm okay. Is is a and powerful thing. You could say the universe thinks I'm okay. Whatever you Infinite need. Infinite intelligence has invited me to this party. Mm -hmm. And I know I just kind of like said something weird at this party. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I, I just said I'm going to breach. Yeah. yeah I, I've been screaming <laughs> I'm going to breach at this party. <laughs> there are a lot of people here I'm trying to impress and I can't stop. How speaking. did you get over it though? You mm. can't just get over it. No, I don't. It, it's been, a, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a, about a year and a half's worth of therapy Yeah. of just like, so the way that mine manifests, my like extreme anxiety and like OCD is just, I have a, I have a new joke about what this, but I have it. Sorry, what is OCD? <laughs> what if I didn't know the acronym? <laughs> sorry, occasional <laughs> cranberry deposit? <laughs> The I OCD mean, is here, always have, on time. He's always on time. If you have a shot of cranberry, what was the one we had? Did I have cranberry in it? Because I'm feeling a little shaky. Um, that's an occasional cranberry <laughs> deposit. I, I have a, I have a new joke about this that's like working forty percent of the time. But um, I have a a form of OCD called pure obsession. So you have a perfume. Yeah. The, 
Pete. This is why joke Pete. theft isn't real, guys. It's not. We're all this thinking is why the joke same theft things isn't all real. the time. Here's a compilation of Amy Schumer stealing. <laughs> it's so annoying. Eat shit, dude. Give me all of those premises. It's, I'll we'll, show you every punchline. I'll do the exact line. joke that she did. And, uh, so, and what makes Amy great or anybody, anybody great is how they're doing it. Is, yes. And, and there is some theft, but I'm like, 98% of it is not Unless real. we are saying the exact... Somebody yeah. was talking to me about this. And it this. better be the fucking Ark of the Covenant joke. Oh, yeah. It better be... Oh, who's going to... Who's you, Mexican, we're going to build a wall, but who's going to build the wall? God. Give that to my fucking barber. I mean, give it to your daughter. Your daughter, my could write, daughter like, would be you, like, but I've noticed Mexicans do a lot of labor building. in this country. Oh, so wouldn't they build she it? She stole for Patrice. Oh, man. <laughs> you took that from Patrice. It's so annoying. Hey, I, everybody making those comps, get in touch with what you're really mad about. Yes, let's think out about it. Out of love. Out of, truly. Because it's not that. Let's get in touch with the fact that maybe your creativity isn't sparking as often as you want it to and yeah, you've attached yourself to yes. this idea. And like, there's so much of comedy fandom now that's obsessed with that idea I as know. well. And I will step it back and say, I see something loving and protective in its intent. I agree, I agree with that. That's you very generous. I mean? That's very generous. We're going we're gonna to protect something precious to us. Yes. But I'm also here to say, come on, did I, did I steal no. pure obsession? No. Is Sounding a like a favorite. Right, exactly. Like, Get I, out of here. A friend was talking to me. I cannot remember what comic this was. It was somebody brilliant that I respect. But we were having a conversation about this recently. And he said, um, he was like, I think the the obsession, which I'm not sure how long that's been going on in comedy, but the obsession with the idea that people are constantly stealing material. I feel like it really peaked with Amy, or it seems yeah, like I it did. That. Um, but he was like, I think it's based on like the generational trauma of like literally comedians used to be doing each other's acts. Like yeah, that yeah, was yeah. it. It was like street oh, jokes. And there's still echoes of like, of like Am but I that creative? Was my act. Exa exactly. Yeah. I thought that was really smart. I'm like, <laughs> and when Chappelle told that story about an older comic when he was like 16, mm -hmm. taking one of his jokes, there is something deeply violating. Oh, hundred percent about like a brilliant, unique joke, and they just take it. Yeah. And I, so I'm. I hate joke theft. It's like you with you got to. You got to. When I stole somebody that just from way you, above me in the business. Is, well, is the taking Chappelle that story, to the go, bank. Or I could just take it. That, that's the story Chappelle takes. And I'm like, oh, uh, well, it's, it, so there is a violence to it. Yes, there is. It. It's threatening, yeah. Also, this is talking out the other side of my mouth. I'm also just like, I just watched this clip of Joe Rogan where somebody was talking about game to a professional gambler. And they were like, is that a big problem? Like throwing games, like refs on the take, teams on the take. And the guy was like, no. No. People just like to think that it is. I know. He's like, not really. And he, this was interesting. He goes, you know why? Because gamblers and, and casinos are so on it. In the same way that comics are kind of policing ourselves. A hundred percent. We can relax a little bit. I, I, I don't and, know. And, and comics, I think more so than people realize, tend to talk to each other about that. Yeah. Like I have plenty of comedians. Like I had a friend the other day who had a very similar tag. And it was like a pretty, you know, it was it was an odd subject matter. Yeah. Um, And he came up to me and he was like, just to let you know. He was like, I think we've been doing this joke about the same amount of time. I have a tag that's very similar to yours. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, hundred percent. I was like, I definitely didn't steal it from you. I believe you didn't steal it from me. Can we keep doing it as different jokes? And he was like, Yeah. And it's uh, like we clean. we kind of police that uh, in, united, our own, in our in unity. To uni united in our nations. unity. Yes, exactly. Unity. Yes, exactly. A delegate from <laughs> Boner <Tennessee>. Town. <laughs> well, it has to be like a boner joke. We can oh. we can handle it, but a lot of times it's not dealt with, and it should. I've, well, I've made this reference a million times. I did a joke about an old weatherman in Chicago, and I was like, you got to trust him because he doesn't just see it on the radar. He feels it in his bones. Oh, that's funny. My friend Josh Cheney, who's very funny, Cheney, was like, um, I, I do that joke. And it was just like, oh, okay. Nobody was like, but I, but I, you got there first. Yes. You win. Yeah. I, I wasn't even like that. I was just like, you can have it. That's yeah. just how this works. That conversation didn't even need to happen. Okay. You're not like, show me the date where you wrote yeah. that down or whatever. Exactly. The hell. Could yeah. I see the tape? Uh, <laughs> Who cares? When you said that, I was like, yeah, old weatherman. Again, tell that to my barber. Yes. You know, he, he's we, trying it out, out. The third haircut, he's got it right. Yeah, yeah, the he's first been, one, he's like, old <laughs> weatherman, you know, you trust him because he's got arthritis. My By the third haircut, he's like, he feels it in his bones. He's like, killing. Damn it, he's got it. He's got he's it. He's been workshopping that. My barber thinks he has an hour, but he only has 15. <laughs> he's got a tight 15. He's got a, tight. He's got a great opening. <laughs> then he does a Q&A. He's just shaving bald spots <laughs> in the back of your head doing a Q&A. <laughs> the Q&A act. Oh, how did we get here? Oh, oh yeah. I was talking about the OCD, OCD thing. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like way off track. you a pure obsession. Pure obsession. Tell me what that means. It, it, uh, so to, to my, this is a relatively new diagnosis, but to my knowledge, 
as my therapist has described it, it's like you don't get any of the fun act outs of OCD. It's not it's not as compulsory yeah. as regular OCD. Oh, it's pure obsession. It's pure obsession. So you have O. I have O. Yes, I have sim- I have, you simply, have, OD. I have I have OD. <laughs> yeah, you have obsessive disorder. I exactly. Which sounds but that's already been taken by overdose. Yeah, we, I, we can't use we can't have both of those. I can't be OD all the time. Disorder. I am ODing all the time. You're here, odd. Like, <laughs> I'm odd. Yeah, you're I'm odd. odd. Yeah, you're there odd. it is. Yeah, we found you're it. You're very odd. You're very odd. But gal. pure but so not the magical thinking of mm-hmm. I have to kiss this sandwich. Exactly, exactly. Not the, you know, or my mom will die or I'll change my locks or whatever. It is uh it is just in my head. And it can manifest as like a lot of times I think it manifests as like extreme like hypochondria and just like intense worry that's sort of like circular. I always thought it was just anxiety. Yeah. Um, but intrusive then, thoughts. Uh, very intrusive thoughts. Yeah. Um, not to the extent of like, oh, I'm going to drive off this bridge or whatever. Not like they're, they're not like mortal in nature. Yeah. Um, what but, are they? In um, a lot of times they'll be Go about. Go find one. <laughs> we'll wait. We play music. I've How been like medicating. Really me stand oh it's like. T- focus up so your medication stops working and you can find oh. one. The worst <laughs> meditating meditation. To fi- yeah, meditating to find the most disturbing find thought it. in my lexicon right now. Find it. <laughs> I have historically, I mean, my biggest one in the history of my mental health has been uh, obsessions with my health, with my physical health. Like, like, like something's wrong? Yes, yeah, very like... Uh, oh, like you said hypochondria. Yeah, a big hypochondria. It used to like really ruin my life and I, it was before I was like diagnosed with this, it was before I knew anything about it. Um, but that's how it manifests for me and I'm in, you know, I think it, I think substances did not help me with this for years and I was trying to make them help me. Like right. That's like turning uh, the radio on real loud. It, it is. While it, someone's sawing a goat in there. <laughs> and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Someone is constantly like, Let's get that goat <laughs> saw guy. My dad texted me. Hi, Dad. You know what? Can I sidebar? I've I've been getting upstream with my dad, and I'm texting him really sweet things all oh the time. Oh my goodness! Now. And now growing. when he texts me, I'm like, I it's know probably going to be good. something cute. Yeah. What, what kind of stuff is he saying to you? I've been speaking. I've been this. Let's not forget what we're, what we're talking about. Yeah, but yeah. I, my dad just likes talking about winning and confidence and stuff. So I okay. text him really embarrassing, like, "Dad, it, like they were at this fancy Chinese, not even fancy, but this very authentic Chinese place. I think it's in Watertown, Massachusetts." And I just was like, he sent me a picture that they were there, and I was like, "How lucky am I?" <sighs> That my parents took me to such interesting and wonderful restaurants. Those sweet you know what I mean? Things. And but it's a gift to me. Yes. To I used to be like, I just wait for a problem. Yeah. And he'd text me like, haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> and I'd spin out. Yeah. And now I'm getting ahead of it and just being like, what's wrong with knowing what he likes and giving it to him? Oh, how beautiful. Right? How beautiful. I have that with my father currently too. Really? Yes, where I finally come around to like I'll have a like darling memory. Yes, and I, share it. Oh my God. Can I say in general, just I, I'm doing appreciation calls. Oh my God. I call, it, it's such a gift to give yourself. I call someone when I thought of a great memory, I just call them and thank them and just fucking tsunami of, of appreciation love. and love. And the rest of the day, you're just like, what could happen today? I've uh, already made someone. Oh, And Pete. think of the ripples. That person's like, Wow, and then they go out and they're kind. It's yeah, fucking. I mean, Haley Joel Osmond, we're paying that shit forward. We're paying shit forward, you dog. Got it. What got do you to pay it forward? No, no, no. That's so beautiful. I'm like coming to this very slowly, and I think it kind of re- it sort of relates to like so fully uh, living in my own head all of the time. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, getting out of your head. Yes. Making yes. it about someone else. Exactly. And I, I was talking to a friend about it recently. It's painful. It's like I, having you know any mental health issue is like very painful, but. I have to look at it sometimes and not in like a self-flagellating way or like a punishing way, but I occasionally have to look at it as like, hey, you're spending a whole lot of time on yourself. Like you are spending a whole lot of time kind of strictly thinking about yourself and your own problems and your own obsessions. And it doesn't help to, like I said, punish yourself for being selfish, but it helps to realize that that is in many ways. It's very Val. Uh, you selfish. Just go, you just go, oh, darling, you sh- you, you're really thinking a lot oh, about oh yourself. Oh, my God. Oh, we might have the same therapist, she and I. Yeah. I my, I've What's been taught name? to um, uh, Hillary. No, it's not Hillary. Okay, got uh, it. Jennifer is Okay, okay. I, I've been taught to They're that all moment, Jennifers and Hillary. Jennifers and Hillary's Go to betterhelp.com. Making, making, <laughs> just pick a Hillary. <laughs> pick a, pick, pick, a, a, fucking pick Hillary. a fucking Hillary. Pick a fucking Hillary for once in your life. You're, you're ashamed of <laughs> breaching all the time? Pick a Jennifer. Are you breaching too much throughout the day? Are you concerned about how much I'll you breach. need to breach? <laughs> I can't. You go in your better help room. I can't stop saying I've breached. Breach. They just close the window. <laughs> like, you like, can I'm, pick a different therapist. We can pick a different patient, too. 
That's not That's true. That's a rotating door. Sorry, BetterHelp. <laughs> BetterHelp, that is not true. This is a riff. Please go to betterhelp.com slash weird. Promo code weird. They, they're teaching you how to breach emotionally. They're teaching nah, you how to allow, you your, how you allow yourself I'm to breach emotionally. I'm more interested in letting you breach. <laughs> Can we get a bedroom wet that's more emotional? That is so gross. That's something that the killer in the first season of True Detective would say. Like, oh my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bedroom wet. Oh my God. <laughs> Remember? Did you? I just rewatched the first season. Why did you rewatch it? I was, I had a hankering. Like, I was like, I had a hankering for I had some a, I dark. had a hankering for some coal. Was that his name? Yeah, Rushed coal. coal. People out here. Oh my God. They don't even know the outside world exists. That is good. Very good. Eating. <laughs> That's very good eating. Well I didn't know. On the fucking moon. He, oh. looking out the window. And Matt McCarthy does the best Woody Harrelson. We did a sketch of it. Oh no way! Yeah, I think the post. No, it used to be up. I love. I I think I remembered, so a little subconsciously, that I have never really had feelings for Matthew McConaughey one way or the other. But in that show, oh yeah, primal urge, very My, primal urge. I was moist. Yeah, I, yeah, we were all breaching. It it was, un- and the acting yeah. is just insane. I mean, I that really long scene where they're in the house and they're, it's like the one continuous shot. It's I the can't. last 15 minutes. Oh, you mean when they're running from the drug party? Yes. Where he gives them the bump of something on his, and it just, and you're like, and you're like what even is that? <laughs> like, I've never knew there was a way to put a drug on someone's hand and you give it to I them. Mean, like, that was the actor on the day being like, I was thinking I'd put it here, Matthew. <laughs> hey, uh, something no one's ever done before. I'm going to put it on my web and I'm going <laughs> to shove it up against I have webbed hands. Like, he was extremely webbed. I'm he very like, webbed. Like, the James <laughs> Webb telescope's gonna get you fucked <laughs> up. Uh, I'm definitely something that's just like no dose and a little He's, bit PCP. That was his like interesting fact about himself. Yeah, and I, like it was like I got kind of an, an intense web, and I'd I love to use it in my acting. <laughs> It's on his resume. Yeah. I can do a British accent. I have a very intense thumb web. Uh, Originally from Perth. And I have the biggest web you've ever seen. Wait, they're watching his audition and he puts his hand up and they're like, freeze it. That's the guy. guy. I want to know. I would like to know, did the director or the actor who, or was it in the script? Who said that he, because you remember that part for you, that for you, for you out there. He puts a little powder and he gives it to Matthew McConaughey to go <laughs> snort it on his hand. Which, like, I mean, it's like what the a most power. invasive. Yeah, and like, Matthew McConaughey's eyes are like, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm a cop. Well, but okay. he does it. What was it? Was it just blow? I don't think so. No, right? It was, was like speed. a insane like speed yeah. or even like hallucinogenic like kind of thing. Drug. Yeah, he. You definitely think. I think it's PCP. Right. right I think right, it's right. some sort. I don't know if you can snort PCP. <sighs> I take it anally. <laughs> 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 I put it in my tushy. Another sponsor. Thank you to tushy our doc. <laughs> no. Thanks to tushy. I've been putting PCP. Up my ass. <laughs> tushy doesn't care what's in your tank, guys. Tushy, don't check what's in your tank. Tushy, colon, fill it up. Fill it up. <laughs> colon. Why, that's how you have an orgasm every time you go to the bathroom. There's no shame. <laughs> Ronald McDonald just wiped me. <laughs> We're removing the shame for me putting PCP. Yeah. God. I, one ass at a time. <laughs> Sorry. Tushy, Tushy, one ass at a one time. At a Come time. on, that would help. I think I think that's brilliant. I, I think people like, are going for it. <laughs> we should get a free Apple Vision Pro because of what we did with Val. I had Val put on an Apple Vision Pro. Oh my god, on the pod, and she laughed so hard. I, I want to like, send try me it. a real. Send me. A, you know how to find me, Apple. <laughs> I'm out here. You're Apple.com. I'm PeteHolmes.com. <laughs> Just dot com us. Dates and more. Dates and more, <laughs> and also a, a contact email to my manager. <laughs> And his address where you could send an Apple Vision Pro, you got it. Did you experience that? What? Did you put on the Apple Vision Pro? I did get very giddy when I wore it. What is it like? It's, um, well, it's a little disorienting. I'm sure. It's a little strange. Yeah. But then when you have the dinosaur come through the wall, you, I, I just giggled like an eight-year-old boy. <laughs> it was so, I was like, Wow. I'm a little surprised that people aren't just kind of going, there should be like a parade or something. Oh, I'm like sure. this is happening. Yeah. I tried the the meta meta one as well. Mm-hmm. I did it right there. Fucking trolls and shit started coming in the room so and I'm cool. shooting them with a laser. That's... And I'm like, how is this not front page news? I, and like, I more people have to be doing it than I realize. I tried I VR know. recently, did like video game VR. And so fun. I mean, right. I'm, I'm tripping over shit. I'm laughing. Yeah, it yeah. is. It makes you feel very, it's like a sense of childlike wonder associated it with it. And that we're all wearing God's Apple vision. Pro. Yeah. It's like, we're all wearing one all the time <laughs> and it's just called the universe. 
And that's what's existentially strange about it. I also think it's interesting that like, I'm not trying, I know this has been a dirty episode, but like <laughs> the first thing you think is like the implications for horror and pornography right, are, are huge. Are rife, yes. You yeah, could yeah. be very scared. You could also be very turned on. But the whole thing is cameras. So I, I don't think I'm going to do it. It's a little too cheap, but the Apple Vision Pro body tarp. Because there's cameras pointing down everywhere. Oh, my God. That's how it can see you doing this. Yeah, 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 of course. So it's yeah, also it has can to be see you masturbating. Oh, my so God. So you need the Apple Vision body tarp. <laughs> so sell it as a box set. Yeah. It's made of lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, It's like the getting pro, an MRI. The pro can see through a regular tarp. It can see you down there just <laughs> working, what you're doing. working it, it out. What you're doing. You it cannot is, go cheap on this. No. You absolutely do need that, though. That's scary. I I don't plan on <laughs> masturbating in it. <laughs> But it's because the whole know. thing is a camera. Yeah, oh, 100%. I Let's mean, put I'm on already... this camera. But then I was really thinking about this. Talk about getting rid of shame. Are we going to live in a world where everyone's wearing glasses that are recording things? Around? What am I? I don't mean to be doing like a editorial no, piece no, no, from an here. old man here. But are we just going to get so used to being filmed that you're just like, of course there's footage of me jerking off I am and nobody cares? So, I am so curious about that because it's already kind of in my mind that it's like we've been recorded in a million scenarios that we had yeah. no knowledge of and yeah. that will only increase over time right and and i think with the with the kind of rise in uh in like ai porn and stuff like people making like deep fake videos where it's like that may very well be what I look like nude and you have figured out how to do it. Yeah. I have no control over yeah. it. It doesn't seem to be regulated well. Right. I think maybe, especially people with any sort of celebrity or notoriety, it's like- There's going to be, everyone's fucking you. And everyone just has to go, okay, well, I guess no one's going to make laws saying, against this. Is there going to be like a beyond the pale? Like, yeah, is or, it like yeah, it yeah, goes yeah. past the point of absurdity uh -huh. where you're just like, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Mm -hmm. I do think that's probably where we're headed. It's it like, so would you, who would you like to have sex with? This person. We'll make it happen. And it just goes, here they Trish are. Trish from accounting or whatever. That, right. Oh, it's so... It's a little... But you know, can I offer this? I don't know if this is comforting. I don't know what this is. <laughs> but it's what it. we're doing in our minds anyway. Right. What I'm saying is, it's kind of like a more things change, the more they stay the same. It's like, were you more comfortable? You, obviously, yes. Yes. But it's just kind of like another extreme... What I'm saying is there's only so many things human beings do, and we're going to just keep doing that in more extreme ways. We're only eating, fantasizing, fucking violent fantasies, video game fantasies. You know what I'm saying? That's so true. So it's, just, it's more of the same. Yeah. If you were looking at the planet as like a, like an alien that ha didn't have any of our urges. Yeah. It, like Seinfeld had that bit where he's like, every technology, we find a way to sexualize it. Yeah. I, I forget the whole bit, but he goes like, phone, phone sex. Internet, internet That's porn. A, okay, yes. Photocopier, put your ass on it. <laughs> That's really that good. Great? That's really good. Because That's there's great. only so many things we're doing. Yeah, that's so true. And we're going to take them to the nth degree. Yeah. But really that like, I mean, the way we were just talking about it, I'm like, it, it, the sex thing, I'm like, do you just shrug your shoulders and go? But when you mentioned extreme like violence and violent urges, like that's when it gets uh, very, very scary. Well, and are we going to control people's? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's video games, right? Yeah. When Grand Theft, it's it's kind of like old hat by now, but Grand Theft Auto was very disturbing that you could go around and hit someone with a hammer. And just like kill a prostitute. Yes. And then you're also like, and I, this is this is not my official stance. I don't have an official stance on it. I am like, that is what's happening. Like we do have weird thoughts. Does it encourage them though? I, I, it I, seems like maybe the most obvious thing in the world is like, yes. yeah. Yeah. But, but I've always been a little bit, it sounds like you are too. I've always been a little bit uh, torn on that. It, it, I, no, I'm torn on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's us letting Lila watch Ninja Turtles and Rabbi Mordecai Finley. I know I mentioned this all the time. He was sitting right there and he's like, your daughter is curious about her own propensity to violence and anger. Oh my God. So the question is, and I'll put it to you, does the show introduce violence or does it mirror the violence that she's already kind of feeling, feeling and when i say violence i just mean aggression like you kids want to like hit a tree with a stick yes a little bit of rage big fucking feelings yep. and they're trying to like a duck shaking itself off after an altercation so i'm you know making the placing the bet on I think it's mirroring, not introducing. I, I think I it's the latter as well. Yeah. I think it's like, it's mirroring. It is also like, 
the degree to which it could be scary is that it's like, okay, it's not only mirroring that or showing it, showing them what already exists inside of them. It is like externalizing it to a degree that like could be dangerous, I I think. Right. Like the, the, uh, letting her watch Ninja Turtles, that rules. That's like, okay, we're going to figure this out in like a healthy way. An extremely angry young man being like, I'm going to go beat a prostitute to death on GTA. Right. It's like, (laughs) should he have that ability? It's troubling. Yes. Because I know if I play Grand Theft Auto, which I do, if I, I play it and then I get in the car, I drive differently. Do you really? First of all, it's not my car. <laughs> Second of all, I'm not stopping at any lights. And nobody nobody cares. I'm up on the sidewalk. I hit a guy. <gasps> I, oh my no God. stars. No. <laughs> I hit a guy. I'm not even getting no the stars. feedback that I'm supposed to. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. You don't get the cool repercussions that you get in the yes. game. It's like, go out and try it in the world. It's not going to feel as good. It's I, not going <laughs> to. I heard in the new one, they're fixing the cop. Because what happens in the old Grand Theft Auto is, is if you commit a crime, the cops come right away. Oh, wow. And I've heard that they're in the new one. It's going to be more realistic, which is, again, strange. That is so funny. Like they're if like, you rob a liquor store in the old, sorry. No, no, no. That's so funny. They're gonna, I mean, if it's the LAPD, they're going to be there in like three and a half hours. You're just sitting there. You're like, I really want to do right by this. It's the I don't easiest wanna, I don't game wanna, in the world. Yeah. I'm, I got in a hit and run, I guess. <laughs> but in the old one, if you robbed a liquor store, what would happen is cops would start running in and you'd, and you'd you know, shoot at them. Yes. In the new one, apparently, they'll form a perimeter and they'll wait for you to come out and they have you. Okay, very Because if you realistic. come out and try to shoot your way out of that, they'll get you because that's the strategy in real life. That might actually be that might actually be deterrent. I used to, when uh, on the rare occasion that my brother would let me play the video games that he was playing, it was always GTA. I really liked it. But sometimes when he would go away, I wouldn't like the violence. And so I would just uh, obey all the traffic laws. That's a fun. I've done that. It's so I've nice. walked. I well, walk yeah, everywhere. Take a nice little walk. But what's so frustrating <laughs> is you're playing Grand Theft Auto. You're like, I'm going to do everything properly. Uh-huh. You're walking on the street. Like, I'm just a guy. I'm going to go get a sandwich. Uh And then you pass somebody and they attack you or something. And you're like, there's no way around this. I have to live in this world. I have to kill this man. He has to die. I have to choke this guy out. I was eating my turkey sandwich. What it is is I'll be playing and I'm trying to play cool. And then somebody goes, nice shoes, dipshit. And I'm like, (laughs) my hands are tied. You're you like, just said, nice, I have every gun on me. I have me. every gun I'm walking. I, can't even, I can barely even walk how many guns I have on me, okay? If I, if you saw how many guns I had, there's a fucking grenade launcher, a bazooka, AK, all this stuff. You wouldn't say nice shoes, And you dipshit. decided to say nice shoes, dipshit. Pete's like, I'm going to handle this like I handle it in real life. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you had that story in your stand-up where you were wa- somebody was following you, which is a true nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you went up. Would you, would you mind? Oh, yes. Morning when, radioing when I, me. When I... Uh, uh, talk to a, somebody's following yes, you, yeah, and then yeah. you saw another guy, a trustworthy looking guy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a guy standing with his dog um, outside of his apartment. He had like a little pug, and he looked like a nice man. And it had been like a few blocks where it was like this guy's kind of close up on me. I was sweating it. It was at night, it, you know, in Hollywood. I hate every part of it. I, it's just, it's just. I always am like, I live right in Hollywood. I'm like, I'm gonna take a walk, and then you do in the evening, and you're like, shit. Like, there's a lot going on. Um, By the way, can I just say, isn't it kind of beautiful? I, I'm interested in laws that account for, I'll just say what I'm saying. Isn't it funny that stalking is a crime? I don't just mean stalkers. We as animals don't like being stalked. Stalked, yeah, followed. Just followed. And, and, yes, yeah, yeah. and I think it's kind of nice that that's made the legal system. It's uh, like that's against the law. It's just a feeling. Yes, Nothing's yes. been done, but we all know that it sucks to have someone just tracking you. Yes, 100%. And the cops will come in and be and, like, and, you're uh, under arrest. Yeah, that I, is That's that kind of cool. cool. But the, 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 the fact job, that we've made it, it is like a very primal, just like I'm being watched. I mean, but like it's not, he- that feels like a heart law. Like a head law would be like, but they have committed no crime. Com- yeah, 100%. He just happen to be going on that zigzag route okay he's unarmed there's no there's no threat to your Your person did he even say anything to you and i know it's like fuck that stalk he was stalking them that's yeah that's uh, that is that is very cool that's a very good point i was being stalked by this man and 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 sometimes you uh i can get a little you can get a little in your head about it and be like am i overreacting yeah this was a situation where it was like three or four blocks like in my neighborhood where i would turn around he would be like 10 feet closer it was very very odd part of it and I stopped and I asked this guy, he was like smoking a cigarette and walking his dog. And I was like, you look like a nice person. I was like, I think this guy behind me is following me. Would you just stand with me for a couple and minutes? he's like, and this is how I met my and wife. <laughs> he felt, it did feel, I was kind of trying to, he was, cause he, he thought we were flirting, which is very, which is his own problem. <laughs> That's so funny. You have to, oh, to be a woman. Hi, 
I'm not interested in you. I feel I like help. I'm going to die soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need help. And he's like, I got some help over here. Oh, I here. got some help for you. <laughs> you need some How help. How about we go to Olive Garden for some help? <laughs> Me and my wife would both love to help if you'd like to come upstairs. <laughs> we're looking for a third. Is there any phrase worse than <laughs> we're looking for a third? You're we're just on help.com looking for a third. It's never the couple you want it to be. Looking for a third is never the couple you Can want it you to be. Can you write a movie where the first scene is you're having this great conversation with the, with the dream man? Uh -huh. And he goes, so th this is great. You feel this? And you're like, yeah, because yeah. we're looking for a third. Cut to title card. <laughs> Peek, peeking. Peeking. I've peeked. Peek, peek, peekish. I've peeked. Peekish, peekish is cool. I've never heard peek. Uh, me looking directly at the camera. You're, you're sued by the blackish people. That's us. We ownish. Peekish. Well, they have grownish. We ownish. We ownish. We ownish. We ownish. We ownish. We're ownish of ownish. You have to accept the ownish that we own ownish. My ownership. Your ownish. My ownership, Your Honor. She's stalking our like, who is owning of ownish. We want to reveal he's talking to a fern. Yeah, he, he is out of his mind. His eyes are going in two different directions. Talking to a brick wall. Oh, my God. I can't focus. <laughs> I can't focus. I can't focus. <laughs> I got eyes going two ways. <laughs> Tell me what it says. <laughs> yeah. My eyes aspire to Giamatti. That's our goal. I'd love to be holdover oh eyes. Oh, my God. Nobody's seen it. Oh, I that? am in love. I've watched it three times. I... W wish I had the. I'm going to watch it more. Favorite movie of last year, easily. Perfect. Incredible movie. Perfect. And all these movies that are like, and then he gets struck by lightning and yeah, he stings, he falls in a well. How about a movie where it's just they're over there for the holidays? They're over there for the holidays, and everybody's got a lot of feelings. That's it. And, and a lot of heart. Oh God, and I GMI. wept. Ah, I, was, I, went, ah, I got. I got it. I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> just we, sounds Giamatti. I, ah, I went to that wasn't it um, I liked it <laughs> ah, I'm gonna breach I'm gonna breach ah. the fact that he stinks I know that, that, that half of his thing is that he stinks so bad he, he smells like smells. fish he smells bad uh, I was I went to go see that movie with a friend is this friend you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, it's it, was my, it was me without it's OCD. It was my friend that I have who's mentally well. Um, Peak Laura. <laughs> Peak Laura. We'll, We've got oh, Laura Peak. Now we have My Peak alter ego's name is Lauren Peaks, and she's insane. Oh, she's insane. She's I like, like stealing your girlfriend and stuff. Oh. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> she's a Katy Perry song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stay away from Laura Peaks. But I went to go see this movie with a buddy, and it was supposed to be a bigger group of us. Everybody else bailed. It was just he and I. He's a very sweet man. And it was one of those where you're like, you ever see a movie with somebody? We're good friends we're not extremely close. And I, and so you're kind of holding in your cries. Like, it, uh, like I wanted to weep at so many moments of that yeah. movie and I was stopping myself because he was right there. And then at the end of it, those final scenes, he's watching him walk away. It's just like, uh, just such I can't a, handle it. uh, it's such a beautiful message. When his face is like, you're gonna, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. Uh, gonna, I made a that's sacrifice. That's really good. It's not good. It's real good. Uh, I feel like it's safe. Is, I feel like the face is selling it even more. I've got a okay, but he's trying not to cry. Giamatti not trying not to cry is my ringtone. <laughs> it's, my, it's my sleep sounds. That's what I thought. It's a white noise. <laughs> Life is a journey. What if that did just put me out? I could see that being true for me. Oh, man. But I'm well, trying not to cry the entire movie, and I really, that last scene hit, and I was just like, I just... Uh, unbelievably unable it to hold it in. gave you exactly what you didn't know you needed. Oh, my God. And isn't that a good movie? Oh, it was glorious. Not and just I, what you knew you needed. What a snooze. Well, sometimes I uh, I do this a lot. I am so... I'm, I'm upset a lot. <laughs> and so <laughs> <laughs> I find myself upset a lot. And so I will sometimes avoid like art that I know will make me sad. Yeah. Uh, music, movies, TV that I know are, yes. are like really beautiful and like- We were just talking about this yesterday. Really? Yeah. Like really deeply felt and like uh, I know that it's gonna reflect a lot of my emotions but and I'll be afraid of those emotions and not wanna see them in myself. Yeah. And then I, I, we, I talked about this with a friend right after we saw that movie. I was like, I wasn't going to see this movie because I knew it was going to, I knew it was going to break me apart. And it's like, I needed to be broken apart. I yeah. needed to have so many of the things that they were feeling reflected yeah. back at me and like yeah. see them in myself yeah. and see a beautiful resolution to something like that. And it's like, why do I avoid that? Why do I avoid that feeling so yeah, often? It doesn't serve me at all. That, I, that's what I was saying about music. 
I was yes. like, there's this song, and I still forget who it was, but Trader. Do you know who sings no, Trader? No, 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 no. Who was? Olivia Oh, Rodriguez. nice. Okay, this I love it. This is literally yesterday, and I, I already it. forgot. But it's just a song about being kind of double-crossed. <laughs> Getting a little bit screwed just over. Just kind of like screwed over okay, by a partner. Yeah, sure. And I'm just like, oh, oh, I, it's so, but when I'm there for it, it's like exactly what you need to be broken into little bits. Yes, yes. And you need to, you know, get your ratio right. Yep. Being together and being broken into bits. A hundred percent. And I think I'm always kind of looking, I'm always, I'm, I, like I said a little bit earlier, I'm a little bit afraid of my own mind sometimes. Yeah. And so I'm always just kind of like ducking in and out of feelings, trying not to look directly at them, I think. Uh, and it's like, yeah, that's why people make art in the first place. That's why people do stand up. That's why every single piece of art exists. I hear that. And just as someone who's also lately, I, it's been weird. I, I'm not a huge intrusive thought person. Mm -hmm. I do have them. I, in fact, the ones that I have, I don't even label them as intrusive because they're so familiar. Right. But those are my judgments and like weird, like, look at this piece of shit. <laughs> and, uh, when Anne Lamott and her husband, Neil did my podcast, I've, I've been doing this practice where I go, oh, there you are. Meaning oh, there's my protector and he's firing up and he's going, everyone's an idiot because we're safe. Yeah. They're all idiots and we're good. So now I go, oh, there you are to those types of thoughts. And that really helps. But when I have something, we're all so fragile and there's so many things that can go wrong. Yes. And lately my mind has just been going like, hmm? and I'm like, ah, get out of here. And it's the hardest thing in the world to do. Uh -huh. So we can talk about it. Meaning I don't know exactly how to do it. But like I try to find the heart of it. Like we were saying about the people that get a little too into joke theft. Yes. I'm like, but I see some, I see compassion and concern. There for is something. a level of concern in there. So yeah. And I'm like, so this thought is going like, you know, you, let's make it about me. You could explode. You could have an aneurysm or something. And you, and I try to go like to that the same way I do to the thought. I go like, it's so beautiful that you care about us. You know oh, what I that's mean? lovely. You know what I mean? Yes, And it that's does lovely. help. It goes like, I know it's scary out here. Yes. And I see you trying to help us. Those thoughts aren't really helping, but I promise you I'm doing everything I can. Like kind of talking yes. to it and trying to give it a little space. Easier said than done. Because yeah, a lot of the yes. times the thoughts are like the worst things that could happen. And it's really hard to go in that cave and just be like, you are trying to get my attention. Yep. You have it. Yep. I heard you. Yep. Like Lila was freaking out last night because she wanted to camp outside. She just, she really didn't want to go to bed. And I was like, um, we, we don't have sleeping bags. We need to get sleeping bags if we're going to sleep outside. And then she said the most heartbreaking thing that she was like one of her friends at school went camping. And then I told her, her teacher's name is Juniper. She goes, I told Juniper that I was going to go camping and then we did it. <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> so I wrote down, I was like, Lila, she was really sad. And I, I go, watch what we're going to do. She's like, let's get sleeping bags now. It's like eight o'clock at night. So I got a post-it note and I went, look, baby, I'm writing down, get sleeping bags oh, how for good camping. Is that? And I go, see, I wrote it down. That's called a to-do list. I'm going to do that. And I won't forget. And she calmed down. So when the voice of we didn't go camping or the world could end or what happens if we're in a military state and we all, whatever uh, yes, it is, I, or yes, you have the diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to have that same attitude towards myself, which is like, I hear you. That's really scary that and sad. Let's write it down. I heard you. Yeah. And look, she wanted to see the note. Like, so there the, it is. This exi my, well, my feelings exist, exist right here. They're not, they're not um, materializing into exactly what I want. It's not fully sol solved yeah, in my mind. But they're, we're going to do something. But we're going to do something about it. And someone's paid attention to that for me. Right. That's beautiful. To be seen in that way is like I the most saw, important. And we can do that with ourselves. Like, yes. I see that you're worried about that. That's well, beautiful. what's something we can do? We're worried about our health. What's something we can do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then let's let's do that. Be a little bit proactive about it. Yeah. I, I, I have this more than I've ever had in my life, that exact conversation with myself a lot. Um, where I'm, I'm a little bit outside of my own thoughts. I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to them, but I am not becoming them kind of more, yeah. more than I've ever been able to. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, nice. They're, cause they're, they're, they're not you. That's what Val tells me all the time. She goes, me. they're not you. They're not me. I, for years have been like, I am this level of anxious. Like I am anxiety. I am yeah. worry. Yeah. I am fretting. Yeah. I am like, uh, and it's, I'm, I truly thought it was my personality and my like default position. Right. And it is ingrained in me. It is, I think, chemically a problem for me. It is like, but the way that I talk to those feelings is entirely up to me. And I just realized that I did that similarly with like, I'll do it with career stuff. I'll spin out about career, where I'm at, where I'm going, who's doing better than me, blah, 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 all the stuff that we have. 
and uh, and did the exact what you just said reminded me of it so much. But I'll do the like what you really are trying. Like you're like you, you care, care about, about this. this so yeah, much. Finding the good of it. Yes. And wow, like, you really that's a beautiful thing. Yes. Imagine if I cared that much about your career. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I, yeah, not, that yeah. sounds like I don't care about no, your no, career. No, 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 but imagine but, if I was like, Laura, uh, look look what's going on over here. And uh, should we be doing that? Yeah, You'd exactly. Be like, it's like managing an office. You go, I love your passion. I love your enthusiasm. Love your enthusiasm. <laughs> I need to tell that to my that's brain. That's not what this meeting is. <laughs> like Someone's that. like, um, heart disease. <laughs> heart disease is the I, number one killer. I hear them. you. I love that you're concerned. Tracy, would you write that down? That's so This funny. meeting is about what we're going to have for breakfast. That's so funny. I hear that. I love this yeah. image. All of my little feelings caucusing in a room in the yeah. morning. Very yeah. stark lighting. Very right. just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> overhead. But isn't that what we do with people like that? You write it down. Like that type of personality in an office gets such great pleasure in like, I filed a report. Y yes. It was on yes, record. They're, 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 um, they're, they're bureaucratic. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're they don't want to be ignored. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm noticing is these thoughts don't want to be ignored. And that's why the, the Ram Dass thing of like have tea with your neuroses oh wow i love I like love let them that. in and have them let them have their time because i think like children that are acting up they the last thing they want is to be ignored yes or to be like gaslit yes and then you can kind of unpack it it's saying i'm gonna have an aneurysm but really it's saying like are we doing everything we can to take care of ourselves? to take care of our That's health really beautiful and and like the the i have to be reminded of this all the time which is hilarious there are so many things that like weekly I'll talk about in therapy and it's like I'm learning it for the first time it's things I've thought about for the past seven years and uh and something will really click and it'll occur to me but like that all of those thoughts and feelings about like my health and my awareness of just like somatic you know anxiety that I have um are reflective of two things like one I am trying not to think about the tangible and actual problems in my life like yes. things that I should be addressing problems with relationships or family or uh, things that I tend to look the other way on this feel this is internal I can control this yes. I can think about this all I want it's all about me it's all yes. about like what and it's yes. like guilt associated all of this stuff and then two I am trying not to think about dying all of the time. And, yeah. and we all are. I'm trying to look away from the fact that I know yes. I am mortal. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's so cut and dry, so easy that that would manifest as me being like, right. is my body okay? And would be understandable. Yes, it is. Of course I it is. I had a ketamine trip recently. Oh, fun. Yeah. I like that stuff. It was great. I, I have only tried it a couple of times and not in the me setting too. that I should have done it, but it's very fun. I've only done it twice in my life, but it was very like when I came back, whatever, when it was over, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, it's no wonder that we kind of like whistle and play songs and stuff. And it wasn't because life in reality is so horrible. It's that like we're looking for something to just kind of anchor us in this insane mishmash. Of I don't even mean current events. I just mean being here at all. Existing. And then it makes so much sense to be like. <laughs> <laughs> It just makes you feel Wouldn't a little bit better. Wouldn't it be crazy better. if I was in a good mood? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is. You're challenging Instead yourself. Instead of like, ah, fuck. <laughs> like that's your alternative. Or you could be like, like I kissed a girl and I like it. <laughs> Taste the oh, her. Wait, you're getting all the lyrics wrong. Her weedy butt stick. <laughs> her weedy butt stick. Kitty, I love the song. Weedy <laughs> butt stick? <laughs> like she's doing marijuana anally? Yeah, and she took it out, and I yeah, tasted it of her weedy it. butt stick. Isn't that how you be gay? That's <laughs> she how gay understand is. Understand lesbianism. <laughs> is that song problematic? I can't be the first. No, one. I can't imagine. I don't know. There's like, a lot of it. That, out. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's so like it felt wrong. It felt right. It, yes. Here's what I don't know about that song: is it ticks all the boxes. It's like hope my boyfriend don't mind it. I can just see the eighty year old. Uh, seasoned music producer being like, uh, how about a line like, I hope my boyfriend don't oh, mind it. So we know she's straight. She has to be straight. And she has to be a little <laughs> drunk. Like the first yeah. line was like, I was drinking and I kind of lost my nerve. It would be so funny if it was so true to form. Like, I'm not going to tell my boyfriend because I'm still not sure if this is something I really want to explore in the long term. And I don't know. I've had these yeah. feelings for a while and I've just never acted on them. And I don't want to live my whole life That's without doing it. Yeah. That's the bridge. It's I've just a spoken word. Well. There's just bass while she's like, and honestly, it kind of woke something up it in me. Did. And it's not like I'm even into her. It was like I was into the act. So maybe it's just a sex thing. But like maybe it is. I really want to get to know these women. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep at it, but I definitely have to tell Carl. <laughs> Carl's going to freak. Carl. <laughs> Carl's so homophobic. I'm a girl. 
Where, didn't you dabble in the gay? <laughs> yeah, I've been didn't in the you gay. Dip in the gay? I've been in the gay. I love your. Let's not do it. But there's a. You have one of my favorite bits. <laughs> Thank you. Of all. <laughs> Thank you. Is, is about that. I, I I you know I was thinking about this recently. I write. You write a lot more than me, and you have been your. Well, I was curious about your writing. Well, you're such a good writer. Are you writing it? Uh, or are you riffing it? No, I'm writing. I, I am writing. I mean, I started comedy writing like word for word, like one of those people where I was like, if I miss a single syllable oh. of this, then it's not going to be funny. And I would rehearse it like in front of a mirror. Like that's how I started. It was like, oh, well. we are, because I do, I mean, the act I don't writing. mean, oh, wow, like, oh, weird. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> I still have a transcript. Like there's a document that is pretty close to what yes because i don't want to forget words like piss queen exactly yeah. exactly exactly that I, I need every like and now it's become so much more of like you have the idea you've said it enough times but i there was a period like right when i started where i was working um a desk job i was like a secretary and i do we call him that anymore is that sexist well what, a receptionist or, i was a receptionist receptionist yes and I um, um lady help a lady uh, uh I was a lady help uh, I was a little bitch girl a typist <laughs> a typist, typist a was typist. what they used to call oh it. my god see that's fun <laughs> give it to the typist my hair is so big and I'm I'm it's I, so I'm big. indescribably slim <laughs> I'm so thin it freaks Your you out camel light skinny <laughs> my face looks like shit but uh, God I don't have an ounce of fat on me. <laughs> she's zero percent body fat thirty percent tumors <laughs> but those tumors are lean that's right. She's lean to him. <laughs> She's lean to him. Yeah. But I, but I used to sit and just, it was right when I started like miking in, in Tennessee and I would sit and just write and write and write and write and write. And I am still that way, but it's like you reach a, you work long enough and then you get a certain accolade or two. And then you're like, all right, I get all, I got to get all the material out that I have been working on for the past four years before nobody remotely knew who I was. And I was just doing it in Tennessee. Yeah. And so then it was like, that was like an impediment to me for a while. I feel like, I feel like I didn't write hard enough during that time yeah. where I was like, yeah. oh, okay, things are happening. We're getting JFL. We're getting some sets or whatever. And so now I'm back to like really daily practice. Like, as, yeah, as much as I can. I think you're right on, uh, for what it's worth. I think you're right on schedule. I it, it, it can be dangerous to go too loosey goosey. Also, yeah. that's not everyone's style. No, yeah. I think yeah. it's so funny that we're all doing what Bill Burr does. That it was like I was never going to be that clever right. on the fly. That's not how I live my life. It's a it's mix. Not how my for brain me. works. It's yeah. like if I write out some jokes ahead of time and then go up and speak from my heart, you know, yeah. not reciting. It's really helpful to have those lines. I know. I'll even go one further. Sometimes I'll be writing a, a script or something. And sometimes that script, nothing happens with it. it. It was just something I wanted to write and I wrote it. Then I'm on stage riffing and I say one of the jokes from the script. Yeah. And I've said this a million, but stealing from myself That's is amazing. one of my greatest joys. <gasps> I mean, like, that has Whose to be Whose line was that? I was like, make a YouTube comp <laughs> of that. Pete's been stealing from himself. I love that. For 10 years. That's Here's the so proof. That's so fun. That's so. I steal things from my book. I'm like, that's a premise. Yeah, that's then a premise. And I do it and I'm like, I can't can do that. Yes. That's a turn of phrase. That's hilarious. I've done that with all a, of it helps. Is I mean, what I'm saying. This, all writing, all thinking. All yes. Jokes. This is tale as old as time, but like just things that I've been saying aloud, like the first things that happened to you that you thought were funny, yeah. you know, like stories or thing, and like realizing it's like, I never did that on stage. That's ridiculous. I should obviously be telling that story and then on stage. later when you're good enough to do it, and you, and and you're you like, can. now I can make that work. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so fun. Stand it's stand so, so fun. It's the best. Stand-up's fun. <laughs> stand <-up's> fun. <laughs> stand <-up's> fun. <laughs> and sometimes it's the worst. No, I know. I had... Isn't I've that been... weird? It's the best... Let's be real. You know what it is? It's an irregular parent. It's oh an unpredictable I have an anxious attachment style to... Stand up comedy. It's familiar. But I think I deserve it. It's a wire monkey wearing a terry cloth robe. <laughs> you know, my dad texts me this nice thing and I'm like, good set. And then there's and then there can be kind of like complicated, weird feelings as well. I've had the past that show we did that that Eddie show in Malibu. I was like, what is this? Oh god, I hate I'm not it. shitting on it. I'm just saying no, like, no, no, no. that night show. wasn't ideal. Mm-hmm. Cause I was on stage. You know what it was? I'll never forget that set, because I'm a sensitive baby. I'm doing a joke. And it, the joke hinges on how I favor my daughter over other people's kids. So yes. So it's a touchy subject. Yes. But that's kind of the point. Oh, yeah. So fun, though. Such I'm fun doing idea. it. And I felt them all be like. You and I was like, my baby, too. Yeah. And I was like, that's the joke. Yeah. And that that was an awkward family dinner, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I go home and I'm like, 
I didn't like that, but it felt familiar. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. That feel, I've, I've had, I'm coming to you today off of three days of not liking my own act. Where, where it's like, was, was having it's a really. Like the beginning of a letter. It, I, Peter, I write you after three I, days of hating my material. And I write back, Laura, <laughs> we've all been there in the hallows. Remember you're a hack. I'm <laughs> Be steadfast in your approach. <laughs> Better days are coming. There's like a big There's ink wind. splot. Yeah, it's just so much wind. I'm in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> My lips are so dry. Ken Burns style. <laughs> Ken Burns yeah. style. <laughs> Moisten your lips. Get back on stage. <laughs> you need a Largo. One Largo One will Largo. rejuvenate you. One Largo to save them all. You're in the desert. That's so true. Of random shows right now. I need right a Largo. Yeah, I need no, a Largo. I, I do. Flaity texted me the other day and I couldn't do it. And I was like, I want to go back so do bad. Do a Largo. Do my next Largo. I would love to do your I next know Largo. What it is. But, I, but I'm coming off of three days of, of just, just having very mid- sets and it's so funny how mid, much mid almost worse than bad i i agree You're just sort i, of I like, really get something out of. i'm like a guy show. you met at a party and you forget him immediately <laughs> he sucked he had seven beers none of them were his it's it's so much He's easier finishing other people's beers. beers he smoked some cigarette butts in the backyard i saw him <laughs> <laughs> go. But I'm coming off. Go. Of <laughs> I, I'm just talking so much. Go. <laughs> I'm coming off of three days of like, it's so crazy how you can build up so much goodwill with yourself as a comedian over the course of a week where you're crushing and new stuff is working and you're like feeling so high and you're getting so many, so much external validation. And then one bad set and you're like, was I ever good? I know. And look, from I'm in a better way, meaning we're all in our different. Mm -hmm hormonal stages of, of our of, relationship yes. with stand up. And my good word for you today is I'm like, isn't that what makes it endlessly compelling? It Fun. and it is. It is. And and you'll I know you know that. I'm not explaining that to you. No, no, no. I need to hear it. It's like then you do a good set and you realize I've said this a million, but the bad ones are pulling the bow string back <gasps> and then the good one is and it <laughs> wouldn't have existed if you didn't have that tension of the bad ones. I love that. And that's by the way true of everything. Bad dates, bad Bad days. Yes. And then you have the good day and it's informed by the literally the tension of those failures or those mediocrities. That that Isn't like that cool? kinetic energy of like how much you needed to have it. You makes wouldn't have you had it anyway. Yes. And I go up on stage and I realize that there's this fuel in me. And it's like, yeah, there's there's something in you that's saying we can't do that again. Yeah. We can't feel that again. But we need the, oh, I need the draw. And then when like you go up and you're like, I've been hitting bullseyes, <laughs> then you have a bad one. And then, and then you get in your car and you just hear, and you're like, all it right. begins. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. She begins. That really helps me. Right. I needed to hear that today. I'm glad. I, I mean, we all need it. I need it. I'll need that uh, sooner or later. Yeah. But um, so when you were 19, you smoked DMT? Yes. <laughs> Oh, finish your gun story. You go up to the guy. Oh my God, yes. I go up to the guy. And okay, then we'll yes. do DMT. A we man is following DMT. me. I go up to the I go up to the man who looks safe and I say, um, uh, I was like, Can I just stand with you for like 30 seconds until this guy passes me? And he goes, Babe, you're gonna be fine. He goes, I got my fucking gun on me. And I was like, Oh, I got my fucking. He said I got. He yeah, called my, you babe. Yes, babe. and he said and fucking like, gun, which is so much scarier. So this guy's got. Do you think he had a concealed carry uh, permit? Uh, or no, you, I think he's just, he's just got a gun. It. I think he's, he's like it's still the West. <laughs> I think he's still the Wild got, West. And he was wearing sweat basketball pants? shorts. I'm like, where is it? Where even? is it? I, he's I, like, he's at the, you know the that dog's got it in his mouth. <laughs> is a fun reveal for me. So then I stood there for longer than expected. With a man with, with an with man, armed man. With an armed now. man whose first response was, I have my fucking gun. And he goes, do you got a cigarette? And I was like, yeah. And then we parted ways. <laughs> it was the best. But what happens to old stocky? So old stock, I was on my way to somewhere and I was walking from my house to like West Hollywood. And I, he continued in that direction. I was not far from home. I whipped back around and I took the, took my car. Like a, like, like I knew I always should. Walking in, walking in my, like right next to my house in Hollywood past 10, 1030, you're like, I got to tell you this story and I hope it doesn't sound bad. But the other night I was walking, I had a show in Hollywood, which I rarely have like walking, di truly walking distance. It yeah. was like eight blocks from my house. Yeah. And I was walking and there were two guys sitting under like an awning and I felt something hit me and I, 
look down and I, I thought of maybe a cigarette, maybe whatever. Somebody's just being an asshole. Like maybe a, 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 a it's, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know what I was. What I told my friend that and he was like, do people flick cigarettes at you often? I was like, no. It's like when you get those glimpses and you're like, you know, pretty normal. It's one of those sticky octopuses you'd get in the grocery store. <laughs> He's doing the hand thing. <laughs> He's got the hand. It sticks to me. He pulls it back. <laughs> You know, like a piece of like a like a piece of celery at me. You know, you're walking around Hollywood, you get a little ants on a log, hit your leg, you look down, you wake up, you're going with your day. But, like, but like, the sticky hand. <laughs> it's got this. Hey babe, just right on your ass. Hey babe, that's how we met. And then we widen to reveal Carson. your boyfriend is a clown. <laughs> How'd you guys meet? He hit me with the sticky hand. Did I tell you that I sometimes call law school clown college? Okay, so he. <laughs> <laughs> How is Clown College? Clown College is going great for him. He's at U U UTLA. I <laughs> just it's like one letter off. But I so I'm walking. I feel it hit me. I look down and I see, it's like an ember uh, inside. It was a crack pipe. He had like thrown a like a a burning crack pipe at my leg. What? And I and but I was don't people who smoke crack love that uh, love it. Uh, why, why would why you would give you up the throw? crack? That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. He seemed whatever. And I, I was like him. that old uh, you know hood. I don't know how to say this. That old. Uh, Swindle! Someone throws you a baby, and when you catch it, they take they, your wallet. Yes, I was. So he I was threw his crack I was like, pipe. I know. I was like, "What's the grift?" <laughs> Thank you. What's go, the I, grift? I go for the crack immediately. <laughs> and now I'm hooked. He's like, she looks like someone who would take part. I in this. was so close to doing crack; it was a proximity issue. Oh my me. god! <laughs> like once it's here, I'm kind of just waiting for somebody to offer me crack. Why is nobody doing crack in the comedy community? Anymore? And it lands on your lap. <laughs> So he threw his crack pipe at he you. Threw, he threw a little crack pipe at me. And I kind of looked. I was very astounded. I, lo I looked right at him. And this is literally what he did. He went, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't. That's not me. I, like, he didn't say that. But I but keep extrapolating on it. I, went, I don't know. I, Trevor, this isn't you. Things have been weird lately. And I just, I don't know. I, I saw you. I love it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what. The... And that's how you met. And that's how I met husband. my sweet Carson. Carson. <laughs> oh my God. There's a daily joke. I can't find it. Like I know. Little... I've been told, I've been searching for it for ten years. Whenever you get it, please send it my way. I try to give him a little love every day. It's. I call it my Carson, my little Carson daily. daily. I, I keep a notebook of my little Carson dailies. <gasps> yeah, little cute things he says. <laughs> fun so then you just parted ways we yeah we, we we left and then when with stocky and gunny stocky just w went away it worked stocky just kept because he was truly probably by the time i stopped he was probably 20 feet behind me and i just made it i think women have a um a great sense of making it seem like you know someone that's like yeah. a skill that you develop where you're like oh and i kind of did a thing of like buddy uh, to this man I've never met. And so he's 20 feet behind. I think he sees me like gesturing wildly and like slapping this guy on the arm. And he's like, oh, that's like a friend of hers. And so beh from behind me, he just continued on. And I turned in the opposite direction and went back to my home. <laughs> ketamine? <laughs> I'm so curious about your ketamine experiences. Are you doing it in a controlled setting? Yeah, it's very ceremonial. Okay, okay. Very, uh, you know, administer what like a licensed guy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very okay, good. I love it. You're not just like doing it at a gay, at a gay bar, no. like I did. <laughs> Does the gay community? The gay, enjoy the gay ketamine? community loves ketamine. I'm not going to speak for all of them, but it's hard to. But I think it's like saying <laughs> they love peanut butter. It's, uh, ketamine is uh, is fun, but I, I'm not doing it. <laughs> not I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not doing a true detective uh, web bump. That's how, it's in a very controlled setting, very clinical, but that's how they offer it to oh my you. God. That's the only way they know to give it. <laughs> uh, I'm scrambling for the name of the company that does that. They used to be a sponsor. I know Doesn't a few matter. people who are now doing it in, in controlled settings like that. Yeah, you can mail away for it. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I have a friend who's doing it for like uh, depression treatment. Yeah. Well, there's Gary Goldman's book, Misfit, available now. And oh. uh, he did ketamine during the throes of his depression. I don't know what his final take was other than I know that in the movie, the great depression, he couldn't use the footage of how happy he was after he did it because the Beatles were playing. Oh, such so, a like, bummer. Ruined the, ruined the shot. Oh, such a bummer. Couldn't pay for the Beatles. But he was like riding high from it. And yeah, I, I, at least for that moment. had he, And he was very, very, yeah. It, 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 you know, but the last time I did it, Terrence McKenna is always like, hallucinogens are very gentle with beginners yeah. and it's true so the first time i did it was much more love and light the second time i did it 
was very love and light and also a little, it was a little more mischievous. Yes. It was oh my a God. little more like, that's exactly everyone my experience. you know is going to die. Yes. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You were so nice to me before. And I still didn't <laughs> mind because you're in like a very, you're like, what, what do you even, what could you be afraid of kind of place? Yes. And I was like, yeah, but now that you're not afraid of anything, let's talk about some of the things you're afraid of. Some of the real and stuff. I was like, what are you doing? What do you do? You pull the rug out from under me like it's that. It's like dating someone for two years and they're like, I'm going to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're ketamine. Ketamine. Car- I, 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 what I did to Carson is That's, exactly, yeah. oh my God. Ketamine. Oh well, my you, God. You did uh, DMT. I did. I tried DMT exactly once. I, I ran with this crew of people in college that were just, I mean, we were just doing hallucinogens a lot and oh, wow. it was like such a big part of my like very young adult life. See you, that's the angle of your bit is I'm always like, you know, would my daughter do it? And I'm like that I would be fine with that, but I'm like, you have to be a certain age. Oh, a hundred percent. And not even because of legality or anything. Cause no. you know, we're on the way to mushrooms being, being illegal totally illegal. Anyway. Yes. But I'm just like, it's just about, I, not to be weird. I thought it deserved a bigger laugh. It's <laughs> like, I was doing acid in high school and yeah. it's like what are you running what from? am i running i'm just going to school i thought that was like a I was great I, I, i'm like, never happy with how uh, with yeah, the laugh that comes from that i, I need to workshop fan- that a bit <laughs> my feeling is actually when you're in a theater and it's your fans that will be a big line okay oh that's meaning like, you that's just nice have to kind of like suck it up yeah. for a while and but the bit doesn't need anything yeah i don't think oh thank you that's very but, nice but it's true and ramdas would say and a lot of traditions would say you have to be somebody before you can be nobody so what hallucinogens oh, are doing is they're kind of like stripping you naked yes but if you're not wearing any clothes it's a very strange experience beautiful to be like i'm going to show you your real self and when you're like not to say that kids in high school aren't experiencing trauma and things to process they sure are but like later in life it just feels more there, it, like it, it should, I don't know. Well, it, when that like a rite of passage. Yes, I agree with that totally, and that, that I think that bit is exact. That is exactly what Little I mean bit. by that. Yeah. Is that it? Like I, I, when if you're doing it that young, and even if you are going, there were things going on in my life that I was actually afraid of. I make total light of them of in that course. bit, and like I'm not. I totally agree. It's like I'm not a fully formed person yet. Yeah. But often, if you're like going through something traumatic, that's happening at that time. Yeah. And I don't think that taking acid while something very bad is happening to you is necessarily a good no, idea. No, like, it's a I, terrible idea. Exactly. It's a terrible idea. And I felt about it that, and I still feel about it that way where it was like, I did all of that stuff and got, and got used to doing a lot of that stuff when I was a literal teenager. Yeah. And it was just by virtue of, I was talking with a friend about this the other night, we went to a show and we were talking about like what you're inclined to, especially with like substances. And if it is literally only about, I mean, you can have family problems that relate to this or whatever, but it's mostly about like who you end up falling in with, yeah, who you end up getting along crowd. with, the wrong crowd. It's And it was very true of me, like at like 15, 16. Which is funny. I was with the wrong crowd in high school and I just didn't do anything because I was religious. Oh my God. So I was like their chaperone. I should have had God. I really should have. You know, in defense, <laughs> in defense. It was true, but- you did all that stuff. You know what it makes me think of is like, you don't want the first, you know how you can make ice cream soup? Yeah. You get yeah, ice cream yeah. and you're I'm going to mix it oh, up yeah, and make I, like a soup. Yeah. Like Pee Wee Herman. Uh, he did it on one episode. <laughs> um, but you don't want your first time having ice cream to be ice cream soup. No, exactly. Like make ice cream soup the 50th time you've yes. had ice cream. But the first time just eat ice cream. And that's like live your life and then start toying with the fabric. I'm also a little concerned with brain development. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, Carson, Carson and I used to talk about that all the time because we we all but grew up together. We've known each other since we were about 15. Cute. And we're sort of like tangentially like always had sort of. Uh, slightly intersecting friend group. So it was very much the Were same you, for him. Oh, you've been together a long time. We've been together since the end of college. We both went oh, to okay. the University of Tennessee together. Um, but we're friends for for a very long time. But it, it, he had the same experience where he's like, what would have happened to me if I didn't start smoking weed when I was 13 heavily? Where it's like, you are messing with the chemistry yeah, of your brain. Yeah. And now I think like, really leaning towards, uh, despite my joke about New Mexico, really leaning towards like sobriety as kind of like a lifestyle, which I think is, is what's going to happen to me is like, I'm answering for that part of my life. My now developed brain like desires that because there wasn't, I left no stone left unturned. (laughs) Well, that second ketamine, just to kind of give that disclaimer, which I think is helpful. And sometimes we skip over that on this show. Mm -hmm. The second time I did the ketamine, the ketamine was asking these like, but what about this? I'm like, oh, and then since that trip, I've been having more of those thoughts. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is sort of, you know, it's hit and shuffle on the sand of the ocean in your mind. Yes, yes. And like different stuff is coming up. So it's not to be entered into, it's like marriage, lightly. Lightly, <laughs> it's yes. It's supposed to be 
uh, work. Yeah. Yeah. Which precisely. And I, I really, I'm like excited for the opportunity to be a full adult that is able to like revisit some yeah. of these like more elevated substances every yeah. now and then yeah, yeah, have yeah, a yeah. little conversation with myself. Right. But, but I have lived none of my life with my default setting Clear. being my own sober brain. Yeah. And you know, again, I'm talking to myself, mm -hmm. not you. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, there's such joy in like accessing and uncovering your potential for lack of a better word. Yes. And I'm really juiced in that way lately. And I'm like, wow, like figuring out what's in me to share and sharing it is better. I sound like such a fucking no, dude. high school guest no, speaker. No, it's very but helpful. But it's true. And yes. I'm like, oh my God. So I don't, I don't do a lot of drugs. I know I do those ceremonies very rarely, but like sobriety otherwise, and I haven't smoked weed in months and months and months. And like, that's been doing really well for me. It's just energy. I've been coming back to like, everything is energy. Yeah. And these things sort of can deplete your energy and take, and take your focus. And when you become the controller or the command center of your energy and your focus, it's really powerful to point it at certain things. Yes. There's a lot of joy and satisfaction in like doing, playing the unique hand that you were dealt yes. and not just fucking around. And I not, guess. well, and not just like classic feeling, nights. Yeah. Not just having non classic this, nights. I, these are not classic nights. These are not classic so nights. Funny. Yeah, I know. Because it's I think perfect. every time I smoked weed, I was like, I'm going to have a oh, classic the, the, night. This, the, tonight's a movie kind of feeling. And it's and like, it's like no. one out of every 30, it always would sneak up on me. I am watching a movie and I'm dying laughing. Yes. I'm like, this is the best. Oh, amazing. This I'm pizza like, tastes so good or whatever. What else do I do that one out of 30 times works? It pays off. And then I'm trying it again, trying it again. Before I forget, um, not a sponsor, but This Naked Mind by Annie Grace is the book audiobook. Have you read it? No, but I have been in some of my research. I have come across it. Is it excellent? It is excellent. Okay. Yes. I think, uh, yeah, I need to, I need Changed to purchase that. I met her in Denver. She's, she came to the comedy works and I was, I gave her the biggest hug because it really changed my life in terms of alcohol. I, that's the book I read two weeks before my wedding and it's so sneaky. It's not a spoiler. Nothing could spoil it. Right. But at the beginning it's like, this isn't a book about quitting drinking. This is about just taking a look at uh, at what alcohol is doing for you. And yeah. you're like, okay. Yeah. And then like chapter nine, you're like, I'm never drinking again. It really can. Uh, it, and then I go to Val. I'm like, I'm not going to drink. I'm done. And she's like, and Val is so sweet, but she was like, I'm just worried you're not going to enjoy the wedding as much because your family is going to be there and I want you to be loose and light and yeah, not stressed. Yeah. And you know what I was? And that was a real... That's like a little badge I wear is like I I was I found a way. Fully sober. I don't buy I don't buy it. Like I, I know somebody that wanted to quit drinking and they actually read that book and they and they didn't quit drinking. And they were like, I just don't believe that if I'm gonna go camping with my friend, that we're gonna have more fun not drinking. And I was like, it really is a lifelong process. It is of becoming a master at dropping into the present moment having the energy to have things like this is the present moment. This mm -hmm. is it. We're camping. This is awesome. It takes energy and, and to have fun effort. And then the booze is just kind of like, or you could just sort of numb yourself, but it's like, it's harder to become a person that can enjoy things sober, mm -hmm. but it's really, really worth it. Well, I'm becoming so, I love that. I'm becoming so, I don't want to uh, be so preachy. No, no, no. Hush. This is all, I mean, there's things that are like very currently on my mind. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. stuff I've been no, thinking about a lot. I don't feel preachy to you. I just know there are people listening. Val drinks a little bit. I don't look down at of course, her. Yes, of she course not. She barely drinks. She has like one drink. I'm <laughs> those like, what's people, wrong with those you? Those people, I mean, I that's Carson somewhat like that, where it's just like, oh, you have those utter control ones. about them. I, I know. love those ones. And, and then they get I a little goofy, like at the right time in their lives God bless like, oh you, you let loose for 10 for i'm like, like a few how hours. can i go to the bar and slam one and come back it is so no one's counting oh come on like i it's mean it's different do you know do you know jf harris jfk Sweet. have you met jfk have you met my good I friend i think Jake? he's dead <laughs> <laughs> this goes he viral <laughs> November 22nd, <laughs> he was assassinated. Oh, it's my damn, brother's okay. birthday. Oh, I was like, damn, I don't know the date. <laughs> he, was, you know, he was on my brother's birthday. But he has a joke about um, alcoholism, and he's been sober for many years, and he was like, he was like, I was talking to- Like he's like so like decidedly in so, the sober community? Sober, sober, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, someone said to him, oh, I can't imagine going to- uh, He was like traveling uh, overseas, and they were like, I can't imagine going to France- 
and not having wine. And he was like, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> And it's and it's very hard to to put to, because that's a rigid point of view. Yeah. But it is yeah. not wrong. Yeah. Like like if if that is your assumption, I, what what you just said reminded me of something that I have been. I wrote this down the other day when I was having one of those classic nights where <laughs> <laughs> during one of my classic classic nights where I said like I am growing such an appreciation for people um, whose happiness and like joy you can tell does not come easily to them. Yeah. Like it has been hard fought. Yeah. They have been through it. It's not their default setting. Yes. And but they found a way to plant that flag. That is the most beautiful thing in I the world. I completely agree. So when you see somebody like you were just describing or talk to a, a friend who's like, well, I don't think I'm going to have more fun. Drinking for me has always been the easy way out of anxiety, of not having a good time, of being nervous or whatever. It is yeah. a crutch. And in the in those you know I have I've faltered a little bit here and there but in those like when I w was first hanging out with you and and did I just those shows to value and be like darling you didn't falter I know, just, yeah, I, I, know. I just want you to feel it but it, I I might have needed yeah it's, it's like okay. solidified it even more it's like oh sweetheart you just you needed a drink it's okay <laughs> but, but, but yeah it's yeah sure in those in those uh months I found it was difficult I was there were moments where I was really kind of white knuckling it and being like oh how do you do comedy fully sober whatever and when it when I did and when I was able to have like tremendous amounts of fun and be around people that I've, uh, that I've always uh, been drinking around and not do it. It was like, Oh, you like, you earned this. You earned every ounce yeah. of dopamine you that you're getting. Yes. I remember my wedding. Yeah. That rips. You would have, you would have had a, 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 va a much vaguer sense of what happened. There. And when I went to Sam Fischel's wedding, mm -hmm. uh, Katie's, we know Katie, we love Katie. My sweet Katie. Hello, sweet Katie, Katie out Your there. best friend. Yes, my best yeah. friend in the world. I, I don't know who my... I think maybe Mike Birbiglia is my best friend. Okay, I love that. <laughs> We're talking BFFs. <laughs> well, Andy Hall did the that podcast makes... yesterday, and he very casually mentioned his best friend. And I was like, who's my, my best, best friend? friend. <laughs> who do I have the half heart necklace with? It's fun to think about very early in your life, and then it's weird in like your 20s and 30s. You're like, oh, best friend. And now I'm like, <laughs> like 32. I'm like, I want a best friend. And yeah, Andy is definitely my best friend. Go back to eight. <laughs> And get a bestie. Yeah. No, it's wonderful. It's a good label. It's a good role to, mm -hmm. to assign to somebody. But uh, what was I saying? Best friend, blah, blah, blah. Drinking, blah, blah, blah. I forget what I was going to say. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I no. It you certainly off. doesn't matter. We were talking about hard fought happiness during sobriety oh, being like. When I went to Katie Fischel's, uh, Sam Fischel's wedding, uh -huh. we danced so hard. Yes. My shirt was see through, yes. sweated through the whole thing. And I'm sure people were like, I bet he's on drugs. Yeah, 100%. Or he's drunk. Yeah. And I'm like, no. No, I'm I, living. I army shimmied up that mountain. Yes. And we did it. And overcame the fear of like just how anxiety inducing that and environment you know that can it be. It takes energy. And yes. I feel like alcohol takes, for me, took away that energy. And weed can take away that energy. It does for me. And too. energy doesn't just mean like, yeah, I mean like mental, spiritual, and emotional energy yep. to be talking to you. It takes energy to go like, here we are. This is precious. This yeah. is vital. Yeah. It's the only thing that's happening. That takes a certain amount of energy, mm -hmm. and that really makes me happy. So that's my answer is like once you start like to my friend who's like, I won't have as much fun. It's like I agree there'll be a – what. there's that line in the – I think it's in the program. It's like when you stop drinking, you'll feel better. And it's like, you'll feel anger better. Yeah. You'll feel sadness better. Too true. You'll feel loneliness Too better. Too true. Yeah. But then on the other side of that, as we say almost every episode, everything you want is on the other side of something you don't want. But I, you know, I'm here to say, for me, it's been, and that book. I'm going to, oh, audio I'm gonna, book. oh, and I'll, I'll do it audio. Yeah, it's great. Things like that. Things like that where it's like, oh, this is going to actually help my life. It's super I, exciting. It's almost nice for me to hear it in, in somebody else's voice than my own, you know, where I'm like, they're telling me this. I'm you being know, told. One of the points they make in that book that I always think about is like, have you noticed that people feel better just when they order a drink? So the good feeling comes just from saying, I'll have it and you haven't drank it yet. So you see your, your own capacity to just kind of like decide to have a better feeling. To yes. Like, what is that? I forget what therapy branch is like reach for a better feeling. Oh, anyway. uh, it, it might be a CBT. Is it a uh, uh, cognitive behavior? Yeah. Therapy? Reach for a better yeah. feeling. Yeah. 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 That's, that's something. Oh, that's so cool. I'm but, picking up that book today. Yeah. It's really, really good. It changed. It absolutely changed my life. So you smoke DMT and where are we on time, Katie? Just cause I have to, uh, I have something at two. Where, where are we on oh, time? We're at two hours. Did you oh. see the 90? I did see the 90. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Old Holmesy doesn't like really know what 30 feels like. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't either. Yeah. I don't in this setting. Me <laughs> I, I, I it's on real stage, timeless. I feel like I can feel it. This feels very timeless to me. I know what 30 feels like on stage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so, the back of my neck hurts. Can I give you my best comedy tip? <laughs> yes, please. Because you're headlining. Yes. Here's the best comedy tip I have, and then I die. <laughs> you could hear it on almost I take over the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I bequeath it I, to you. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. give you. <laughs> The podcast, and you're like, there's a lot of management like, involved I don't really, in that. I don't really. What time is it? I could have. <laughs> you're going to love the ad spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to love you, it. So go ahead and share it with Laura. <laughs> I just made you the administrator to the guest and ad calendar. Good luck. Um, it's my honor. JK, it is barely a job, and I'm so grateful for it. Here's my best comedy tip. You don't have to do an hour. You get to go as long as you want. <gasps> And that's what you tell. And when they say, when do you want your light? I get my light at 40, but I don't want any clocks facing me. I don't want any countdown. Oh, wow. This is huge. Because I'm going up to be comedy. Yep. And comedy doesn't care how long he's on. And then once he knows what an hour is generally, and they say, how long's the show? I go, it's about 90 minutes with the opener. It's about 90 minutes because fuck you. I, I, I'm doing my, you, I'm doing you. the thing you paid to that's see it. me do. And I'll go up. I need to have the energy of like, I get off when I'm done. Yeah. And when they're done. That's so. I can tell. I cut bits at the end because the crowd's done. I say it all the time. I go, you you guys are awesome. I'm wrapping this up. And sometimes they clap. They go, don't. And I'm like, no, no, no. No, You're watching me. I'm watching you. It's time. You're done. Thanks for saying that. I don't want to abuse this. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But trust me, we're going to. And I go, there's still 10 minutes left. You're fine. Yeah. But like, that is my best headliner tip. That, uh, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that. Pre, I had had my first writing job recently. But pre that job, I had been, I had just started headlining. I would say I was like four months into doing weekends and one-nighters and all that stuff. And I was... Previous to to that four months that I took off to be in LA, I was white knuckling that 45 minutes. I was like, I don't think I have this amount of time. I was nervous. I felt so underprepared for it. And I was not technically. I know now that I was not, that I could have done exactly we what you're describing. Do we all have that time. Yes. Where I, but I was just so scared of that clock. I was so scared of that amount of time. I was, How can you not be scared of a red clock, clock ticking down? Ticking the t- down or up. <laughs> it's really frightening. How can you do anything magical uh-huh. when there's a clock? It's insane. And it's you a, think you're, you've been up there a while and you look, it's, it's been seven minutes, minutes I, and you're it, like, oh, so oh, oh no. And I, and I was so reliant on, I was really not having fun on stage. Like for that first like this three or four Rory. months of headlining. Yeah, yes. Oh my God. It, another, I, another tip. Sorry, you were saying something. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to hear this. Sometimes you try, don't start right away. It's so powerful. Relax. And if, if it's not working, like I'll go up and I'll just be riffing on the stage or whatever. And I'm like, I can feel you guys be like, when's he going to start? Do funny. Or, you know, that'll get a laugh. And I'll be like, I don't want this to feel like a job. Yeah. I'm not going to start. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, you eventually get in there, but like, just practically speaking, when you start headlining, I'm not saying, I don't know how long it, it's been a while, but it, like, yeah. but it doesn't matter. I still have to do it. It's like, if you, if you want an easy 10 minutes, just go easy. Go easy on yourself up there for 10 minutes. I, you know where I learned Dane Cook in his, uh, in Harmful of Swallowed, he does his opening bit. It doesn't do as well as he wanted it to do. And he kind of addresses that and he, and he goes, I'm going to do it again. And he starts doing it again. That's genius. It I don't murders. remember that. It's so funny. And I'm like, oh, that's being comedy. Yeah. Not sweating. Don't do it like there's a gun to your back. <laughs> right. Just be like, uh, but you know, you have to have the jokes the, the, that can follow that confidence. The one, somewhat. the one thing has to complement the other for sure. It can't, yeah. can't, it can't, it can't be all Riz. Yeah. But, but I, you can't be, you can't just be a Riz factory up there. But I, <laughs> what is Riz? Uh, charisma is what the kids are saying. <laughs> Short for charisma. It can't all be Riz. It can't all be no, Riz. That's, you that's gotta have real. stuff to, but you gotta have yeah. material to back up the Riz. And I, there was a big time in my life where I had the Riz, but then I'd go back into the bit and it'd be like pinatas, and it was like. <laughs> Like we lo- bring back the riz. We bring were coasting the on the riz. The riz was better. Uh, but you have no idea how much I needed to hear this at this exact moment in my life, uh, because that whole period made me. I was scared. I was like scared of of headlining, and then I came back and I did this job, and then it's been about a month uh, or so, starting kind of the second month of being back out on the road and headlining again. And something happened. It was my first weekend that I had back. I went to Zany Chicago. 
and I had my first show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Zane. <laughs> <laughs> is Martine still there? <laughs> no, but oh. I know I met him before. He's so cool. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and, and welcome, welcome to Zany's. Zany's. <laughs> I wish. Oh, my God. That's Somebody the sound do that. of oh, me I love having that. Heart, help, heart palpitations. <laughs> Where you feel like you're going to absolutely yeah. show your pants. I And I was feeling that way. I was like, God, we're back to this. Like, do I even have 45 that I'm proud of? Do I have 50 that I'm proud of? And then I got on that first show Thursday, and I was like, something happened. I was like, something is different. I took a moment to relax, like really get in tune with myself. I took a lot. I took really good care of myself over that four months. Yeah. I did as much stand up as I possibly could. Because it's just in LA. Yes. Yeah. And got on stage and I was like, oh, we're we're a headliner now. Like it wasn't it, it, I was not ready before. And I feel ready now. Yeah. And it's been that way ever since. It's something. It's beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. And uh, I'll be, I mean, I'll look back on this time probably and be like, oh, you thought you were doing well. That's hilarious. No, but no, you won't. That, that, <laughs> I don't know about that. But like that. To have any project in your life, if it's stand up or anything that you can measure and see those moments and yes. celebrate those moments when yes. you become a headliner. Because there's a lot of times when I watch somebody and I'm like, they're very good and they're not a headliner. And it's usually ease, it's usually comfort, it's yes. usually like a little bit of, I don't know, everything's been kind of smoothed out and it's alive, like yeah. earthquake. Yeah. And, and you're just kind of there. Yes, yes. You're and in the motion of it all. Even if you are like a nervous person on stage, like that's part of your thing. I was going to say shtick, but if that's part of your thing, yeah, you can still do that in this very like I'm flying the plane way and that's what a headliner is. The headliner also, what is this, a master class? I'm just I'm saying, loving it. A headliner also isn't embarrassed to step out the bit, meaning like if you think something's funny, act it out or like spell it out, stay in the bit a while. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like you just told us a story and you mentioned what happened, but you didn't show you it. You didn't show it. Just show it. That's what a headliner does. Yep. If you want to just say it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the, the bump up is when you go like, and that's so funny, I'm going to do the and, guy. And here, watch this. I mean, hate to, I mean, we're just talking about him entirely too much, but that's Rory. That's like, that is Rory. Uh, like ex in the pocket, like I'm going to do this like three minute act out of a thing that like was once a line. That's right. Like a single line. And that's line. headlining. Yes. Yeah. He yeah, had yeah, that yeah. bit where he goes, when Bluetooth headsets, those are <laughs> yeah, back, yeah. came out. He goes, this is my impression of a guy with no arms finding out about Bluetooth <laughs> headsets. And he, and he puts his arms in his shirt and he just goes, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. And Laura, to this day in my phone, you know how you put the company yeah, yeah, in the yeah, contact? Yeah, yeah. It says, hell yeah, Bluetooth. Oh my God, I love Rory it. Scoville, hell yeah, Bluetooth. So and much. of course, I think I told him about that, and he was like, "I don't even remember of doing that bit." Remember. But that, I, like, yeah, I love that description of of headliner. It's like that's a headliner. Yes, the like, opener goes like, "Can you imagine how excited somebody with no arms would be to find out about Bluetooth?" <laughs> and you kind of go on. Yeah. Rory is going, "Hell, Hell yeah. yeah! Hell yeah!" For a solid Knowing three minutes, I mean. if it doesn't work, then that it becomes the fertile ground to get a laugh. Oh. It's like you guys were done with this bit. Four hell yeahs ago. I'm bringing it back. Hell I'm yeah. not done. That com <laughs> comedy is, it's not asking. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to yell it's truly, hell yeah. You got to. You got to. <laughs> you got to. Yeah. I hate this. Yeah, I got to go, dude. Yeah, this was a fucking I hate blast. that I got to go. <laughs> this was a blast. I know. I, it really, we We've really been doing, bounced. What? We really bounced. I thought you said grounced. We no, really is that, grounced is that like Riz? hard. Is that like, did you Riz? Is that like Riz? Did you breach? <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're about Val's age. This age, believe it or not, you're quite young to me. So I'm like, hmm? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? I know you are young, but like to me, I'm like, help me. <laughs> What's Riz? What's Do Riz? I have it? Do I want it? Am Do I, I need being, it? Am I being extra? By the way, extra is what 40 year olds think is going on. That's but I don't so think it funny. is anymore. I'm still saying it. I think, I think I Val and I are in our 30s. We're like, we're like a uh, year behind even. You're two, maybe three years behind. We're a year behind. Yeah, of what so I'm it still actually saying extra. is. I appreciate. It. I'm, <laughs> I'm ten years behind. Uh, I, I really liked that you were like maybe a couple a, a years. Year. <laughs> it's like Robert De Niro's doctor being, like, you know, you most fathers are a little bit <clears throat> younger and weren't in casino. Al Pacino taking his thirty-year-old wife to the pediatrician. <laughs> How does it look? Let me hear that pitter patter. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. Somebody switch this fetus to decaf. We widen out. Realize, you see he's talking to a fern. He wants to. Eyes going in both directions. I, I want to hear, hear the baby's. 
I envy Giamatti. <laughs> I wish my eyes were in cahoots. <laughs> you know what we say every day in my house? Sorry, I know we have to wrap up. But in, uh, what is the movie? Oh, my God. It's in Heat, I think. Great Where, ass. Oh, my God. I, I, is it great ass? It's great ass. She's the, got a great ass. It, there's a there's a pause that I I that I didn't remember because I remember, but he goes, she's got a great ass. Yes. It's like he's like searching for it for like three seconds. Oh my favorite, quivering. <laughs> I love uh, De Niro and Copland. You blew it. You blew it. You blew I've it. never seen that movie, but I know that line. <laughs> All you need is you blew it. It's a great movie, but if you have, you blew it. Okay, he's, you're a, he's, he's taking like tomatoes off his sandwich, <laughs> which is just the best choice. That's so. Oh, funny. you want to be a cop? I gave you a chance. You blew yeah. it. <laughs> and I feel that way with comics too. I'm like, you want to be a comic? You want to be a headliner? You blew you it. Blew it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, but then, like co comics and that cop, he didn't blow it. He didn't he blow had it. A chance. And and no he spoiler. Took those oh, thank you. He took no those spoiler. tomatoes Did off his sandwich. Let me just put it this way. Did he blow it? You'll see. Come back next week. Or does Sylvester Stallone redeem himself? Sorry, Katie, we're back to three hour episodes. It's really <laughs> inconvenient for both of us. Katie gets paid by the hour. There's there a, we go, there's Katie. An over, there's, I thought there's an over two bonus. Oh, oh no, it's coming out of my this pocket. This is how you find out I don't read the invoices. <laughs> those, uh, those just get paid, Katie. You could be really taking advantage of my lackluster management style. My, my business manager is like, what is a giggle fee? <laughs> See, the riff fee is $500? The, we, the Riz fee? <laughs> Six fifty for Riz alone? Six fifty for Riz alone. What's Katie charging for Riz these days? <laughs> You are divine. We didn't get to talk about DMT or, or God, but it's fine. That's, this, I mean, we did. I'm so sorry we did so much dirty, ridiculous things, but it was kidding? really fun. We went all over the place. I haven't had an episode like this where I'm like, every three minutes was a clip. <laughs> the whole show Hell was yeah. clips. Hell yeah. The whole show was clips. Good luck, Joe. <laughs> Joe's our clip, our wonderful clip. He's our I wonderful clip. It. I love it. Love Joe the clip. Joe the clip. Joe Faria. All right. When did I turn into Michael Scott? I liked it. Saying I wrong like, things. I... Joe, the clip, Joe, Joe Faria. <laughs> Why did you say his full name? <laughs> so misguided. Joe, could I text you right now? He's like, can you please? <laughs> could you edit that please out? stop. <laughs> can you edit that out? Um, yep. I just want to tell you a gun story, South Nashville. That's when I thought we weren't going to get along. So oh I wrote down God. Nashville. Oh, I'm so glad we did because I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> uh, smoking. Chantix, country music, married gay, gun story, DMT, drugs, booze, sober, writing. Wow, that is my whole life. Yeah. Do you know where you ever get like the bullet points of your own kind of existence? Yeah, yeah, And you're yeah, like, yeah. that is really what I'm putting out into Yeah, I was like, yeah, this is you. <laughs> Chantix, guns, South, being kind of a lesbian, sobriety. Yes. And look up, are you going to do a spesh? I'm I'm working. Pre-spesh? I'm pre-spesh. I'm working. I'm working on that hour that I want. Get that spesh. Yeah, I'm excited. Because those it. bits, great yeah. bits, great bits. Thank you, Pete. Great means a lot bits. to me. Yeah, no, you're fantastic. I think this is going to be a fun one. It'll be one of those ones. Like I had Pete Davidson on. Yeah. But like way before. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah. But, you know. When I look for a guest, I still say I had Pete Davidson on. And yeah. they're like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. You got him to do it? <laughs> yeah, when he was 17. Yeah, when he was, when he was 15 years old. He had a learner's permit. <laughs> he needed a ride. He needed a ride somewhere. And he hadn't I was even like, smoked a cigarette yet. <laughs> Sweet Pete Davidson. Sweet He's little like, Pete. I don't know. You know I, just, I, don't know. I'm, I'm I have a here. feeling I'm going to be kind of, kind of cool someday. I think at some point I'm going to have a personalized jersey. <laughs> I said that to my best friend, Mike Birbiglia. You know how Chappelle <laughs> wears his own logo? Yes. Pete Davidson has his own logo. Yes. It's like, what if my next special, I'm, I don't mention it, I'm just wearing a jacket with like a big, P, like a graffiti That's PH. That's so funny. And I don't, it's key that I don't mention that it. That you never bring it up. But it's but it's both on the shirt and huge oh, lit up behind yeah. you. In fire. And they cut to the crowd and they're all wearing them. You're like... <laughs> has this been available for purchase what did they have to change when they walked in it's girls clearly wearing it over like cocktail dresses <laughs> oh my god can i tell you I, there, there were these five fans that wore <laughs> custom shirts no. to my show in utah and i was just a little too tired i had been doing too many shows and i acknowledged them but i replayed in my life i'm like i should have given them more i should have given them more. they had they had shirts 
that said, can we upgrade this Quiero to a Queremos, which oh is one of my God. favorite lines. So they're like, they they're made so versed in your material. And I just was like, oh, wow, you made, and I was like, did anyone else make a shirt? Just like a quick joke. But and I should have been like, that really made, here, if you see this, yeah, that, that really meant- made my, made my month. I wish I had given you, I should have been like, please, this is what I wish I had said. Please come to the green room afterwards. You come and hang out with me. Yes. You have to, but I was just like, Hey, cool. But that's been my gratitude practice is making me realize how much my life matters to me. Yes. And I, knowing what I know now, I would have been like, that's really special. That's Thank awesome. You. Well, I think it's like, uh, maybe in your younger years, uh, you're like, is that overindulgent of me to like love that right. thing that they're right. doing? Is that like egotistical of me? Like, Why do you what spend so much? That? All I had to say was come get a picture with me. After and show, and you give a cool, like a uh, stand up, show them your shirt. You know, I you know, know, you know? of course. <laughs> What's of course, your name? Uh, yes. But I would have been in the same. Them into the set? Yes. I would have been in the same headspace of like, should I focus on that? Well, one of the things, this will be the last thing. When I'm doing stand up <laughs> too much, it's, it's hard to, for me to be my inner Scoville. And yeah. Like, like, that's why I try not to do it too much. Wow. How often do you? How often are you going up? One week in a month, but then like ideally two times a week. Oh my god, I love this. What yeah. a what a nice it's schedule. The right schedule. Does that keep you in? Okay, I know we have to go, but I have been thinking about that. Where I'm doing, and I think this is the phase of my career where I need to be doing stand up yeah, nightly yeah, yeah. and as often as I can. But sometimes. It's like you reach a, a what's the word I'm Cruising looking for? Altitude. Yeah, there's like a limit yes. to how much better I'm going to make this joke like in an evening, yeah, and in like three sets a night, and nothing will make you grow tired of your own yes. voice and material than doing it. You know. I think what happens later is you realize how much of the uh, refining of your jokes is happening unconsciously when totally. you're not on stage. Totally. So it's more about like time, letting it ferment, and then you're driving and you think of a line, or you're on stage and you add this line. Yep. So like. It's getting, uh, becoming conscious of how you're working when you're not working. Yeah. And and don't get busy with movement, but just like look at what's getting you a result. Yes. And you're like in between those times. And I feel like it was very is, Tony Robbins. That, it, was, it was glorious. But movement can be like, yeah. look, I'm doing so many sets. It's like, but are you getting the result you want? Maybe it, you should take a few nights off. Also, do you find that you're exhausted to the point that you're, uh, as is your, is, yeah. Am, are, are you, you tired living? of comedy? Yes. And are you having experiences? Yes. And is your voice sore? And are you resenting audiences even when they're laughing? And are you spending time with anybody other than comedians? Yeah. Are you spending enough time with your partner? You, you and know. is this the life you imagined for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go full Tony. <laughs> My Tony impression, nobody will know this, but he goes, he goes, and then you're up and you're doing too many sets. Does that sound familiar? He goes low. Have you I've know Tony? I've seen enough. I have go, seen yeah. enough to know. Does that sound like that, anybody you know? He goes low. <laughs> and then you're up there and you're doing it and you're in the poker. Can you relate? You're like, Tony, you giant. But are you happy? You giant devil. Is this, <laughs> I love that. Is this a life you imagine? I love that. When are you going to ask, what do I really need? Tony. That is such a cons- compelling way to speak. No, I know that's why he's doing it. a gigantic statement and then it's to you. It. And then we're going to kick it back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you relate? <laughs> Laura. No. I only have eyes for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> Don't forget I'm talking right into your heart right now. You see me? My see giant you, brother. <laughs> heart. I see you. All right. Oh. Um. <laughs> Com- compulsion only? What is it? Uh, pure obsession. Pure obsession. Pure obsession. Thank you. I'm purely obsessed with this episode. Me too. <laughs> I wish we had recorded it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be disappointing? Oh my God. That would be a goes, tragedy. Oh no. um, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll have to do it again sometime because there was a whole other thing yes. when you're promoting your thing. Sure. Yes. Would love to. Uh, literally anytime. This was such a blast. You're the best. Thank you for this gift. Would you say keep it crispy? Yeah. Keep it crispy. Very fast. Now do it like you're performing in the South. Keep it crispy, y'all. You got it. You got it. I start frowning. You, you got, got it. it. They like it when you frown. You oh, got it. That's Lord. De Niro. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I got a pretty good face. Hold on. Is this De Niro face? Yeah. 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 And Josh Rubin taught me it's this. Yeah. Sounds like a pug sleeping. It is. <laughs> We're not selling cars here. Uh, we already mentioned Modern Mammals, my favorite shampoo. I think you should take some. It's for guys, but as I mentioned in my riff, what will it do to your hair? Uh, I, it just adds texture and it keeps all the oils. It makes it look like you didn't wash it, but it's clean. Biggest scam in the world. It. Hair is hair. Like hair we, is hair. We can use the same Face product. soap works on your hands. Modern uh, yeah. Mammals for guys. I'm saying it, Joe, my partner over there. 
It works on, come on. Lady Get hair. Get in that lady hair. The next time you see me, I just have this like insane, it's grown like it's six amazing. inches. Amazing. It's really hydrated. Come I'm going to use it. No, you're going to love it. All right. Uh, keep, we already did keep it crispy. And there's 45 minutes more of the episode. <laughs> okay, well, goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. You may win. You may win. You may win.